Hello and welcome to the Hillbilly DVD Reviews Podcast. What is the Hillbilly DVD Reviews Podcast? Well, you're about to find out. I'm your homeboy, The Goat, here with my partner in crime. I'm Phil, Dirty D's, Nuts, coming at you, America, what's up? We're going to be tag teaming this bitch today. This is the first podcast episode of Hillbilly DVD Reviews Podcast, but we are not fucking new to the game. Where did we come from? Well, we've been doing YouTube movie reviews and shit for since June 2011, so we're kind of old hats at this, but we're just kind of branching off into new areas. I, I thought you were going to go back even farther, man. I'm glad you didn't, man, because we got a whole lot of fucking history. But as far as uh, getting our shit out there to uh, the world or whoever, yeah, you're right. It's been about a fucking year. We stumbled upon uh, YouTube. We decided to... Uh, do a little channel, and yeah, that's what we've been doing. So we, just, we, we like it. to talk shit and drink beer, and I'm fucking drinking beer right now. We're the kind of people who like to get fucked up and do fucked up shit, and <laughs> there's nothing worse than a couple of hillbilly motherfuckers with a podcast, so here it goes. Or nothing better, so if you stumble on this by accident, hope you like it, don't be offended, but if you stumble on it on purpose, fucking enjoy and have a drink with us, mofos. Exactly, like th- like this being the first one, I'm not expecting motherfuckers to really just be finding us on iTunes or whatever, we're probably going to have a lot of crossover on this early episode of people who are watching the YouTube channel, people on our Facebook page. So I just want to get a shout out to like all them people. We're we're not leaving you. We're not leaving YouTube. We got a little YouTube hiatus right now. We're taking a couple months off, but we're coming back strong in January 2013. And the reason we want to take the time off is we want to get some good shit going for you guys. Buck up some new projects, just like this one, the new podcast. You know, we yeah, man. Plus, needed... it's Christmas time. You got to get fucked up. It's hard I know, to, it's man. Hard to get fuck... together and do a channel. With fuck a fuck this party. slaving to the grind bullshit at Christmas time. I need to get drunk on some Yuletide cheer, motherfucker. No shit. I'm faced right now. All right. Well, so... Let's get this show on the road. All righty. So, you know who we are and what we're all about. And now, let's get into it. what are we drinking? What are you drinking, Phil D's? Oh, goat, I'm drinking my signature brewski. It's called Coors Light. Oh, I'm tapping good the choice. Right now. I love that shit, man. And uh, I don't know how many I've had, but I, there's plenty more to go, that's for sure. How about you, man? What's, what, 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 are you, what are you throwing down? Well, I just started out. I know you're ahead of me a little bit, but I figured I had to stay halfway sober since I was kind of driving this fucking jalopy of a podcast. So I started out with an appetizer. I just had a can of Bud Light with lime. Kind of a fucked up skeezy choice, but I like that limey taste. And now I moved on to a bottle of ice cold rolling rock. Unfortunately, it was not brewed in the glass line takes old Latrobe because some fuckers bought rolling rock and started making shit. It's not as good as it used to be, but fuck it, it's cheap. It's all I can afford to drink. Really. I love that shit, man. It's the fucking cheapest bottle beer you'll get. So I'll tell you what, I, you know, I, I got a good idea now. It's a, it's a new thing we'll have. So you guys fucking send us your comments. Tell us what your favorite drink is. Tell us what you're drinking now, what you had last night, all kinds of shit. We love to hear what everyone's drinking. Exactly. Just real quick, if you want to see our YouTube videos, just go to youtube.com slash hillbillydvdreviews. If you want to send us some comments, tell us what the fuck you're drinking out there. Send us an email at hillbillydvdreviews at gmail.com. We want to hear, man. Like We just ain't throwing this shit out. Like, oh, get in touch with us, and then you email us, and we delete that shit. Now, we're going to read that shit. And we're going to say on air what the fuck you've been drinking and shit. So don't be shy, motherfuckers. Be proud. That's I'm right. Hear it. And we got a Facebook page, too. I don't even know how you get to www.facebook, whatever. Just go to Facebook, type in Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Our fucking page will pop us. Friend us. Fucking, you know, behind the scenes, send us some titty pics of your girlfriend, if you don't mind. And just get on there and leave some fucking drunk and fucked up comments. Man, that reminds me. I don't even know how the fuck we're doing this. I'm not even sure it's going to work. You just stuck a fucking microphone in front of my face and gave me your beer and said we're doing a podcast. Yeah, I, I took your word for it, but hey, is I, the people going to listen or what? I, I said, I said, let's do a podcast. And you said, what the fuck is a podcast? And <laughs> I, I did say that. Yeah. yeah, and I said, well, there's this thing called an iPod, motherfucker. You are aware of that, right? And you gave me a confused look. Barely. Yeah, you told me you don't even really believe in iPods. You don't even I believe know. that they exist. Do not. I never seen one. Never seen one. Fuck, dude. I mean, for all I know, you could just be punking me right now. You got a fucking microphone in front of my face. You got a microphone in front of your face. We're talking, but is this really going to fucking hit the airwaves or what? I sure hope so, man. This, I'll tell you what, man. I need to take some time off from the YouTube channel, get this podcast rolling, because I, I like technological bullshit-wise, 
I had no idea what went into it at all, at all. I listen to podcasts all the fucking time, but I had no idea what went into it. So, so I got to give a real early shout out here. I got to give a big thank you to my homeboy Bat Thirty Two from Exploited Cinema. That's a really great podcast. I think everybody should. Every they they keep it nice and greasy. Him and his buddy Delroy. So Bat Thirty Two, I just hit him up. I was actually a guest on their podcast about a month ago. They're real cool guys. I hit him up. I said, Bat man, you got to help me out, man. Like, what do you? And he told me how to upload it and do all this shit. So yeah, so thank you to Bat Thirty Two. He's kind of like our. Uh, podcast guardian angel has a right now like our mentor yeah thank thank you guys a lot we really appreciate it love your show glad you're fans of us too well we'll try to try to you know not, we won't let you down basically. yeah we'll try not to let you down man because you know we kind of have built up a little bit we have a very small following on youtube but it's very loyal people people really are sticking with us and stuff so we hope that it's like crazy fuckers man yeah like I like just us, fuckers all bad boys around the world man yeah. everybody's watching hillbilly dvd reviews on youtube Woo! And leaving comments and shit. So so we hope that like this ain't the Hillbilly DVD reviews jump in the shark moment. <laughs> I, I don't think it is, man. I mean, we're not fucking doing a network sitcom with fucking Tim Cocaine Allen or anything like that. We're just doing our thing. We, we, we're we saying no to, to fucking sponsors. We don't want to clean up our act. We like to drink. We like to fucking fight and cuss and shit, man. I like, we, personally, I like to throw shit through windows. Oh, I love that shit, dude. I love awesome. <laughs> All right, let's keep the train rolling. I guess probably everybody they know who we are now. They like at this point in the podcast, I think people are either hitting that delete button or they just want to hear more. You I'm know just what saying? I mean? Start the fucking show. <laughs> yeah, like, stop cocking you? around, you fuck. But hey, this is the first ever podcast we did. Like, like the first few podcasts, I'm hoping they'll turn out good. But if they're a little bit rough, get off our nuts, man. We're doing our best, God damn it. You know they're gonna suck. We'll be listening ten years from now, saying we're fucking boring. Oh shit man, we're we fucking just fucking around all day long. So let's get into some movie related topics. Right. Let's talk about what have you seen lately, Phil these nuts, either at the movie theater or on your DVD player or fucking I don't know, like at, out on bootleg on fucking corner, little you know them vendors selling them. Like I don't know, like maybe you watched a fucking Betamax this weekend. I don't know what you did. No what have man, you I, seen? I didn't see a fucking Betamax. Now I've been watching some sh- some shit, but the, the problem is I don't always remember what I see it because I fu- I fucking get them drunk, I watch them drunk, I return them drunk i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing that i saw that you also saw and we didn't see it at the same time but there's a little movie called the collector that came oh, out oh yeah the collector. nine and uh we know there's a sequel coming out and that kind of sparked our interest we're like how did yeah. they fucking get a sequel and the sequel's so, badass too so you went out and rented it and watched i it. rented it i i gave you the go ahead i said jump on the motherfucker what are you waiting and, for and then i went ahead and rented it and i watched it and i think that's a pretty fucking awesome movie i, I think, oh, I think it is, personally, that's probably one of the best horror movies uh ever made especially the, the new generation of horror so I, I thought it was awesome yeah man the trailer you think it's gonna be some saw bullshit no it ain't no saw, saw bullshit it's like some old school 80s slasher violent like just like you don't know what this evil motherfucker in a mask is gonna do next exactly man exactly and, and you know going back to the 80s you know you and me we love the hardcore shit, but don't just fucking kill people and shoot it. I mean, there's a fucking story here. There's a backstory. The fucking main character who's not the bad guy. He's more of an anti-hero. I mean, there's right. some fucking humanity in this movie. The fucking writers wanted to shock, and they did, but they also wanted to fucking tell a good story. And it was it was fucking brilliant, man. I fucking love that shit. Yeah, man. Hell. So what else you seen lately? Man, you're going to make me fucking remember all that shit? Ah. Oh. Well, all right. I saw. Oh, you know what I saw? I saw Moonrise Kingdom. Wes Anderson. Oh yeah, I man. Thought that was tits, man. That's I thought a that good was, fucking movie, you know, man. I, it wasn't necessarily my favorite Anderson movie, but it was serviceable, and it might have been the funniest, in my opinion. I mean, I laughed. Yeah. I laughed out loud. Normally, I just smirk and say this guy's fucking crazy, but I was laughing, man. I I thought he did a great job. The actress pulled it off. Good, sweet story. And you know what? Even though it was PG thirteen, it, it it needed you know it didn't need to be R. I mean, it served its purpose. And- one of, one of the rare cases where a PG thirteen movie was actually good. Very rare. Yeah, and, and I don't think he made the movie saying I'm gonna try to make this PG thirteen. I think he made the movie, showed it to the MPAA, and they're like, okay, PG thirteen. He's yeah, like, oh. not not at all. Because when he made that movie, the only thing he knew that nobody would be going to see it. That it would exactly. Be- that it would exactly. be, it, uh, he's like, this shit is going to play in five theaters, so I'm going to do some fucked up shit, have some little kids but, trying to kill each it, other and shit. Normally, that's 
that's usually the cue to make it hardcore and go for an R. But he didn't give a fuck. He just made a movie that he wanted to make. And 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 honestly, honestly, goat, I can't think of anyone under the age of seventeen that would even want to see it. Yeah, you, know that's, you might as well just said it's R anyway, motherfuckers. Because no, there ain't no fucking fifteen year old in America smart enough to sit down with the attention span and watch a good slow paced Wes Anderson movie. You know what I mean? I, I can't think of any fucking idiots our age that would want to see man, that. man, like, all these fuckers walking up and down my street, man. Like, it's just a bunch of all these young kids. It's just a bunch of little glue-sniffing motherfuckers. They can't keep shit in their... Couldn't keep a bag of Skittles in their heads, let alone shit. fucking the, pl- no the plot shit, of a complicated adult feature-length film, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. But, but, you know, since you're asking, I did see a couple of indie picks. They're old. Oh, they're, yeah. not, they're not new. I think I told you about it. I saw... I saw this movie called uh, The Ceremony. It had fucking Uma Thurman in it. She was the only uh, only big name. It fucking probably cost about two bucks to make. It rated R, very good. It's about this uh, fucking, he's a children's writer. He's short, and he crashes Uma Thurman's wedding because they had like a fling. She cheated on her fiance with him. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty fucking good. Yeah, I'm, she I'm she wanted that things. dick, huh? Dude, I'm telling you, it was it, 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 it was pretty good, man. It wasn't like a typical romantic comedy, you know? I mean, this fucking tall-ass, old-ass Uma Thurman fucking cheated on her I'll tell you, she looks like a giraffe, but she ain't a bad-looking woman for a giraffe. Man, if, if I'm going to if I'm gonna fucking old lady giraffe, it's going to be Uma Thurman. Yeah. All right. So, so that, that was good. That was good. Um, what about you, man? What you been seeing? Oh, man, I'll tell you what, man, like... I, because of family bullshit, like where I live, these hillbilly motherfuckers, they take three weeks off for Thanksgiving. So they was crowding the theater. They was crowding the red box. They was crowding everything. I couldn't get the shit for weeks. I kind of developed a case of the cabin fever. And then like when I hit fucking hit it, man, I fucking saw about a billion movies. I want to try it. I saw some movies at the fucking the, the, the first run theater. I saw some movies at the cheap theater. I saw some movies fucking from the mail, from Netflix. I saw all kinds of shit. Let me see. All right. Well, give us like three highlights. Maybe maybe one one mainstream movie that we'd be surprised that you'd like, and then give us like a couple of like older independent movies. Oh man, have. I just I, I I can't even think of it. I just I'm going to run them off, and then, and then we'll see. Like I I broke the streak. I fucking went out. I saw the new Twilight movie. That was the first one that I fucking hit up. Um, I ran to the cheap theater. I saw the house at the end of the street. With Jennifer Lawrence running around in a tank top, all sweaty, her young perky titties bouncing all about. Wait, wait a second, wait, wait. Is that is that new? Uh, it came out like around Halloween time, but like it didn't make no money. But I think, it's... I think I think it played in like four theater, four theaters for like maybe yeah, like, like it was one of those ones that came out and like you saw one ad for it on MTV Trace and nobody gave a shit. Was it good? Yeah, it was pretty good, man. Like it kind of had some twists and turns, but and it was PG thirteen. But I paid a dollar fifty. Actually, actually, no. I went on discount Tuesday. I paid a dollar to see that motherfucker. Yeah, fuck them. I tell you what, and there was a lot of stinky mother, like some stinky teenager motherfuckers come in, smelling like some gouda cheese and fucking weed, man. Like, uh, you know, like people want to smoke weed, like whatever. But don't hot box that shit and then run into a fucking crowded theater and make everybody smell your fucking stinky weed ass. Come on, and now. then and then fucking finger bang the whole movie. No, oh no. yeah, yeah, and they they come in these motherfuckers. It was two girls and two guys that sat down. Uh-huh. The the two girls was on one side, the two guys on one side, and then like this one motherfucker, he got all tricky and jumped around the other side, went on the other side where the girl was, so he could share some popcorn and finger bang and whatever. What? Hey man, do do your little fucking teenage date somewhere else. Stay the fuck out of the theater, man. Yeah, for real, dude. That reminds me of the time that uh, Phil D's and the goat saw the roommate. You remember oh, that? Oh yeah, bullshit? I remember that bullshit. <laughs> you, yeah. Man, you 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 were wise beyond your years, man. I remember there were some fuckers in front of us talking and laughing and hooting. Now the movie was was fucking a piece of shit. It was oh, dog shit. I tell but, you what, I hate that fucking Cam gigging that that, that cheesy no, it, Canadian it, it, motherfucker. It, it was awful. But I remember I, I said I said hey go let's fucking move. You know I mean it was either, it was either that or kick some ass. You know fucking, yeah. Well I was about to slap, slap these and, fucking and then, silly. And you turn to me, man, and you you fucking look like Obi Wan Kenobi all of a sudden. You you had this wise, serious, sober look, and you said you said Phil, no matter where we go, it's going to be loud. <laughs> this place is full of fucking teenagers. It's so, true. No, they was, so just they was all sticking thumbs up their asses like fucking Georgie Pudding around, Pie. And you were out, man. It's like there was yeah. there was nowhere to sit where we weren't going to be fucking interrupted by a bunch of fucking yahoos. But anyway. And, and, and you know what? That's the price you pay when you go to see a PG-13 movie. 
That's fucking poetic, man. I know, man. <laughs> that's why. That's why I say piss on PG thirteen. Like I go to see movies made by adults for adults. If I see some PG thirteen shit, I'm gonna pay a dollar, dollar fifty. I ain't gonna fucking be dumb enough to run up fucking Friday night and see it with the fucking well, well, Girl well, Scouts was- of America and shit. Well, yeah, man. I mean, you fucking hit the nail on the head because when you see a PG thirteen movie, it ain't just the movie; it's the whole experience. It's the you mindset. Are- you're getting a PG-13 experience. It's not just yeah. the fucking movie, dude. You're so right. So, America, t- take take uh, notes from us, man. Pay attention, you Stay know? Stay away from that PG-13 stinky diaper bullshit. <laughs> yeah, man. Wait for that shit to come on Redbox or whatever. Man, I can't even remember all the shit I've seen. I've seen... Oh, I saw a flight with Denzel... Drunk-ass Denzel watch. That movie sucked, man. The movie starts out good... He starts out in a hotel room, he's snoring coke, there's some girl showing her titties and stuff, he goes to fly a plane, the plane starts fucking crashing, he lands the plane upside down, so only a couple fuckers die, but then, like, the fucking U.S. government, they want to go after him, because he's just drunk as fuck, so half the movie, he either spends throwing all his beer in the trash, not drink it, or, or he fucking is going to get new beer, new fucking whiskey and shit to drink, I mean, come on, man, like, either... <laughs> I, I love, yeah. Either drink or don't drink, motherfucker. Right. Make a choice one way or another. Either pour it down the sink or pour it down your gullet, but quit fucking around, Yeah, quit man. fucking around, it's man. Make up your mind, <laughs> fucking Denzel yeah, Washington. I mean, well, I didn't see it, and I take your word for it that it was preachy. Yeah, it was some preachy I mean, like, drinking how, how bullshit. How hardcore was it? I mean, was it at least a serviceable R-rated movie? Was Aside from the drinking, I mean, you said there was some Okay, in yeah, man, the first 30 minutes, man, you see tits galore and all this shit, and then, like, I don't know, man, like, it just, it, like, from that point on, it could have been a made-for-Hallmark TV movie, man, it just was... Oh, like, man, I hate those. Like, like let's time. stand up and do the right thing and sacrifice ourselves so the truth and the justice come out. Fuck that, man, that ain't the way real shit works. So it's basically kind of realistic when you're talking about a drunk pilot, but by the end of the movie, it gets unrealistic. Yeah, man, like a bunch of family values came into play. Fuck, I ain't got time for that shit, man. That's that's the thing about Robert Zemeckis. Once in a while, he'll come out and make something that everyone thinks is hardcore, but it's still a bunch of baby bullshit. It is, man. Like, he says, like, I I listen to interviews talking about, yeah, I came back and shit and made a real movie with real actors. I I don't think you did, motherfucker. I think you were jonesing the whole time for a CGI Tom Hanks to play a drunk pilot and shit. I think I think the only reason, man. yeah, Speaking I think of Tom Hanks, man, he do, he's the one that did the fucking Polar Express, right? Yeah, he did, man, and then they did it in 3D, you know, fuck, man, I, I don't know. I mean, just 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 stop pretending you're making adult movies and just go back to fucking what it what what Back to the Future, whatever the fuck he did. Exactly, I, I, man. Quit fucking around. I don't know, but no, nonetheless, man, just fucking. Now, yeah, quit, 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 quit. Once, e- either make movies via PlayStation 3 or make movies with human beings. Fucking quit fucking around, quit quit playing with me, Robert Zemeckis. I know for real. Speaking of Polar Express, he had to shut down his shitty little animations. He did, man. Disney was fun in that shit, and they came out with that shitty Jim Carrey Grinch, not even Grinch, uh, oh, no, it was, Christmas, uh Carol. Christmas Carol. Christmas yeah. Carol, which, which had been done a million times. Not only been done a million times, but then they released that shit near Halloween, not even Christmas. <laughs> You know, you know what gets me? Dude, you're right, they did, man. That fucking came out way before fucking uh, goddamn Halloween. Well, the thing about it's like, like people like cartoons because they're cartoons. You know what I'm saying? We, we, yeah, don't. There's, there, there, there's a thing about animation that we like the drawings. It's not realistic. Why waste all this money and fucking do cartoons that look real? Why are you Dude, trying? Why are you trying to turn a cartoon into a human being where you could just have a human being play a human being? It's fucking idiocy. Or, or. Fucking just have a, have some fucking animators in Japan draw the shit and Damn, animate it like this is cheaper than all the fucking what do they they put the light bulbs on the person and they do the motion. Yeah, I action. mean I mean have you not played Final Fantasy Seven? Like they don't look exactly like real people, but close enough, motherfuckers, call it a day. Mod Best would be rolling in his fucking grave. Yeah, fuck <laughs> poor <laughs> poor <laughs> Mod Best man. Is that his name? <laughs> He's, he, he's standing out on a fucking street corner right now holding a sign that says, Will Mocap for food. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a fucking old ass broken light bulb fucking duct taped to his body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me, Misa do anything. Misa, Misa work. He's I'm one of he's one of them fuckers like outside the Chinese theater in Hollywood getting tours to take pictures. But like he has like the mocap suit on that's just like a green thing with light bulbs on it. Like like he like he, he thinks that's how Jar Jar Binks looks because like that's how he did when he yeah, did the character. He's like 
Our boy Simon says, I'm Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. Not I was Jar Jar Binks. I am Jar Jar Binks. Exactly. <laughs> and, 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 like, nobody walking by, none of the tourists get that it's Jar Jar Binks. They just think it's some fucking homeless RoboCop impersonator. Yeah, no, they're fucking, they're not even giving them money for charity. They're just walking by, fucking snickering at them and pissing on them. And meanwhile, fucking fake Freddy Krueger is getting fucking 40 bucks a day. Yeah, man, people. fucking uh, L- Latino Frederick Krueger over there is raking in the dough because he went down to the Halloween store and got a fucking shitty little glove and shit. Yeah, he got a he got a glove and a, and a sweater, but 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 his face is all just pockmarked, so he don't need the mask. He just looks like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, the fuckers like that come a dime a dozen in big cities. Exactly, no shit. All right, so moving on, I also saw killing them softly, which should have been called killing them selling out, Lee. Because guess what, Brad Pitt is back in Moneyball, fucking fine form, smiling and barely playing a character and doing his things. And then they fuck. What I really didn't like about killing them softly was they throw in this real worthless character that really slowed down the plot, played by James Gandolf, fucking phony from Tony Soprano fame. And they just throw him in and like he shows up, he says, oh, "I'll kill these fuckers for you, Brad Pitt." But then he gets all drunk and bangs a bunch of fucking inner city hookers and then brad pitt's like you do uh, you can't do the job or whatever and then finally they send him home without killing anybody meanwhile the whole movie's about killing people and they waste about 40 minutes setting up that james gandolfini can't fucking kill anybody because he's too bloated and drunk and shit what a waste of fucking time man it's horrible man and the, and the thing about brad pitt is like i mean it's it's not like he he can't be a superstar but he's always skinny and clean cut and he always yeah. has the same fucking voice in every movie. Like he, he, he he's not really a fucking actor. He's he not the same sh- voice. Shows up, camera roll, please. Let me make sure I got my fucking cologne on. I'm all fucking uh, my, my, toweled off and wax my fucking face. I mean, fucking do, you know, you know, gain some fucking weight, you know, get, yeah, do some something, hair, motherfucker. Do something. Like, like I swear, I didn't know if I was watching Killing Them Softly or Ocean's Thirteen. It was this, all the same shit, tired same shit to me, but, man. But you know, you know what's sad? Like he fucking used to be awesome. I mean, I mean, he did. He, he, California man, he had no problem being greasy and fucking yeah. hillbilly. Shit. He was, was a real greasy hillbilly motherfucker, and that that was real Brad Pitt. Man. Yeah, what? what but he, he's a hillbilly from fucking Missouri or somewhere or Mississippi or some shit, man. I know. Fucking be yourself. Quit trying to globe trot and save humanity and shit, man. Like, you don't need to fucking bleach your asshole, goddamn it. You can fucking be proud to have a dirty ass, motherfucker. Come on. Come yeah, on, bring man. the real shit, Brad Pitt. And then the other movie I saw after that. Fuck was it? Oh, I saw the collection, the sequel to the collector. It was fucking <laughs> awesome, man. It was right. fucking awesome. I won't say anything too much because you haven't seen it yet. But I it, seen it yet, man. No, don't ruin that. Yeah, it was like I will say it was like a little like there were still traps, but there was a little less booby trap shit and just more the collector fucking people up, man. And like well, they, yeah, I, I read the synopsis, so I kind of know what's going on. It, it, it seems like it's a little bit more big scale, grandiose. Yeah, you know, man, they they, they 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 go to his lair, which is just a huge old abandoned building with you know, I mean, there's just shit popping out of the walls, people dying left and right, man. It's like I like it's got my I, actually on the Facebook page because I thought you was gonna see it and I thought you was gonna love it. I put that we both put it that we had both our seals of approval on it. Dude, I, it, it already has mine. I mean, so, sorry, I want to see it, but the fucking movie theaters were yeah, out, man. You know, fucking pulled them before opening week it was even over like like they, they had a they had a sunday four o'clock show and they changed it to fucking wreck it ralph they just pulled it entirely i know <laughs> fuck it oh you ain't making they money we gotta get with this there. family bullshit man oh. families have had their time man and they're gonna have their time again they had all thanksgiving now they're gonna have all fucking christmas whatever man enough with your family it's friendly bullshit yeah. fucking no, no. pull pull the tampon out of your pussy movie theaters <laughs> god no, no shit man but just, just the fact that there's a fucking uh december November release of an R-rated fucking sequel yeah. to that. Like I, re- it's got my stamp of approval. Dude. Yeah, I man, I really appreciate. It. I was drowning in this fucking baby bullshit, and I just appreciated that a badass movie come out. Yeah. Yeah, man, and let me go ahead and plug fucking Josh Stewart. He plays the main character. I fucking love that guy. He he does yeah, mostly good, TV. Man. He does movies, but he's one of the real fucking actors out there, man. He he fucking takes parts that he gets, but he fucking really, you know, he he yeah, knows, man. man. I fucking like that guy. Yeah, he plays an awesome role, and he gets all dirty and cut up and shit. You don't see Brad Pitt like rolling in dirt and shit, man. No, and and and, and the guy ain't fucking ugly, man. I mean, he's got the chops to be a fucking pretty boy, fucking A list star, but fucking whatever, whatever it is, he's in the fucking the collection, and he, I I think he's great. So. America, you got Phil D's stamp of approval. You got the ghost stamp of approval. What do you see that shit? I, I know it's probably only about three fucking theaters, but like if that shit's playing near you, and like don't be one of these little babies that lays in your fucking couch all day, grabbing your stomach, complaining that the horror movie's dead. Horror movies are dead because you fuckers won't get off your fat asses and sing, goddamn. Well, see, man, 
fucking show them, you know, go, go see that. Shit. Buy and, a and, ticket. and then, like, it's just a movie where fuckers are getting slaughtered nonstop. So, like, even if you're dumb, go see it. Even if you're drunk or stoned out of your fucking mind, go see it. Especially if you're fucking drunk or stoned. Yeah, man. see the shit. Like, fucking see, just, when, when the lights come up and the credits are over, just stay in the theater till the next show and starts. Watch it again. Yeah, fucking yeah, sneak in a again, flask man. and fucking six pack of fucking beer, man. Have, have a good time. Yeah, man. You you pay you pay your fucking taxes, America. Come on, take advantage of that shit. Yeah, and then yesterday morning at nine fifteen in the morning, I fucking woke up all ass early and I saw the remake of Red Dawn. I won't go too much into it. A lot of people shit and I own it a lot. Oh, let me empty my bowels. But it ain't. Hey, come on, man. It ain't that fucking bad. It has some good action scenes, but like typical slip, slick, boring fucking Hollywood remakes. It has a generic cast. So yeah, the emotion, the story really wasn't like what was going on with the original and shit. But it was still some decent action. I would say rent that shit from Redbox. Like fucking spend a dollar twenty on it, and you can't go wrong. Hey man, was it the Taliban this time? Who was it? Who was it? I know it wasn't the. No rest man, of- it was Samsung and LG were taking over. North Korea? Yeah, man, they was taking over and shit. I and mean, like, Taliban, yeah, up. what happened was Samsung and LG joined forces, and like, I don't even really know why, but they they formed this coalition because they said they was tired of Americans like like pushing into their business and was shit. It, and, was it Gangnam Style? Oh, it was Gangnam Style, and then some man, like <laughs> fucking every, everybody was doing that horse dance down the street while oh, fucking movies, while Chris right? Hemsworth was shooting motherfuckers with oh, an AK forty seven. Thor was doing the fucking lasso move all around. Exactly, and then like I not to give too much away, but the 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 most brilliant thing about it was was the Wolverines like they used their own technology against them because uh, Josh Peck used a fucking LG uh, Smart Touch phone and took photos of their secret weapon and fucked them all oh, up. Cool, so yeah, cool. man, it, it had it had like the 2012 fucking. Edit yeah, to it. yeah, like they did update it a little bit. Like like I said, it wasn't. Yeah, it was whatever. Well, but hey, hey, you know you know what? Back then though, wasn't Swayze and Shane considered fucking generic actors? Yeah, they were like yeah, and then like uh, Aaron Gray before she had her nose job and Leah uh, Thompson. Who knows? Hey, yeah, maybe it'll be a fucking classic in twenty years. You know, people, you know, I, not all remakes are terrible, and the first one was PG thirteen too. So, oh I mean, yeah, like I mean, like I'm not going to flip my wig over it. Like I still prefer the original, and like the original is one of my favorite movies. People say that movie's cheesy, but I don't think it is, man. Like it's some heartfelt shit about seeing your I, parents it's get fucking killed. Scary too, man. Yeah, I'm man, some Cubans too, and Russians. Cause... Yeah. Because my fucking crazy ass parents were like, "This could happen one day, Phil. This could be, be prepared. This be is the is gonna come get your, you." Your parents were some fucking doomsday preparers. <laughs> Man, they, they fucking had a parachute under my bed and everything, ready for fucking ready to fucking jump out the window if it need be. So, <laughs> yeah. where are we gonna take this fucking bullshit extravaganza? Well, no, the top, the topic for this show, because it's close to the end of 2012 right now. We're recording this. About halfway through, not even halfway, fucking December 9th, 2012, we're recording this. I have no idea when it'll be hit your ears. You might be listening to this a year later, fuck it. But we're going to do not the best and the worst, but the top 10 favorite and the top 10 least favorite movies from us. We, I told Phil, I said, sit your drunk ass down, write a list out of movies. I did the same thing. We're going to compare notes now and go for it. Right now, and like I said, there's a difference between favorite and best and worst. Like, who am I to say what the best movie is? Half the movies I see, I'm shit faced. Same with you, right, Phil? Oh no shit, man! Hell yeah, man! Yeah, oh. so so you're going to be like and be drunk off some fucking Schlitz light and try to tell somebody what the best achievement in cinematography from this year was? Uh, yeah, Fuck man. that, I mean, man! Yeah, I mean, my name is not Roger Ebert, and I didn't have fucking throat surgery. All right, I I, exactly. I cannot qualify the best movie of all time. I've never seen Citizen Fuck. Okay, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if it's bad. Apparently, it's supposed to be a classic, but I mean, I know what I like. The goat knows what he likes. We're gonna fucking tell you guys what we like and dislike. Yeah, we'll man, fuck there. a rosebud. The only rosebud I know about is fucking the ones that pop out in porno movies and shit. Come on now. Yeah, ex- exactly, exactly. So, so, th- so, so th- we'll give you the reasons why either we did or did not like these movies. But this is just like kind of what floats our boat. And maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. If you know, hey, fucking, even if you hate what we say, just send us an email at hillbillydvdreviews at gmail dot com, and you will have your day in court here on the podcast or whatever. So, yeah, and 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 that being said, like, like you know, we're, we're not we're not right or we're not wrong. We're not trying to get you like to to fucking you know t- take what we say as fucking dogma or whatever. In fact, I think you're gonna find it interesting that um, 
our list might be the complete opposite too. I might even disagree with what old Gold is gonna say. So yeah, because because we, we don't. I mean, come on, man. We ain't got the time to be pre-planning this shit out. We just fucking pull out the case of beer and we roll. So you know. Yeah, man. Yeah, Go- Goat hasn't seen my list. I haven't seen his list. So we're top just... secret. He tried to show me his list and I slapped it out of his hands and said, "Get that shit out of here." Yeah, man. He, he <laughs> that's kind of true, actually. You <laughs> think, like, no, man. We don't fucking show me that shit. It's gotta be fucking. Gotta hit me like this. That's that, come on. Yeah, man. Come on, man. Make it, don't fake it. Come on now. So, yeah, man. So we're going to roll down starting at 10, meaning like 10 is kind of on the lower side of the scale. And then when we get to number one, that's like our most favorite or our least favorite of the year. So we're going to start out because we want to get, you know, kind, you know, we're some smart ass motherfuckers. We know we piss people off. So let's start out on a good positive note, Phil D's. Let's do the top 10 favorites. All right, man. All right, man. Now, now look, uh, here's a caveat. I, I haven't seen as many movies as you have this year. I'm fucking busy with work and jail and all that other shit that I get myself in trouble with. Exactly. So I actually did 10 best movies. Well, I only did five worst movies. All right. Okay. And, and, and a couple of movies on both lists I haven't actually even seen, but I just fucking know they're going to be my favorite or least favorite. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. So, if you, if so, you want to roll like that, I, I mean, who am I to say? You know what I mean? I. I, I and that's cool. You know, we, we don't have, like, fucking rules and shit like that. I mean, we just go with the flow and, you know, we, we, we hey, ain't fucking crazy, man. I, it, we ain't been making wins and shit. Exactly. Hey, man, I ain't JC. I can't judge anybody. I'm not even JCVD. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Uh, what fuck? So man. here, here, here we fuck. go. Start it off. Okay. Top 10 favorite for the GOAT 2012. We'll do one by one. I'll do one. You do one, okay? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, number 10. Is a little independent kind of horror movie, drama, whatever you want to call it. It's a movie called We Need to Talk About Kevin. With Till Swinton in it and John C. Riley, some real uh, disturbing looking young kid in it. What this movie is about, and it's told all out of order and shit, but basically what it's about is Tilda Swinton has a kid, this little boy named Kevin, and like from the get-go, like when he's a baby in the fucking crib, she picks him up, he cries. Somebody else picks him up, he's fine. Like it just, there's a weird, unnatural whatever between the mother and the child, like this fucker. And then when he gets older, like he's real defiant, like she tries to get him to eat food, he won't eat food, he throws the shit on the floor. She tries to potty train this nasty little motherfucker, he's pissing in his pampers, even though he knows he should be pissing in the toilet and shit, he got piss running down his legs, shitting, smearing shit on the walls and shit, she just had enough, man, and basically he grows up, he's a real evil motherfucker, manipulating motherfucker, always doing evil shit, always getting on the fucking family's nerves, but every, until the Swinton's like, something's wrong, man, something's wrong with our son, we need to do something, we need to get him some help, and John C. Riley, in typical John C. Riley fashion, plays a fucking curly-haired hillbilly motherfucker, and he's like, he's just a little boy, come on now, come on, we're all this shit, so he grows up, and, th- and, and like, this ain't no spoiler, because the way the movie's told out of order, it shows like the end at the beginning, all this shit, this motherfucker kills a bunch of people at a school, it's, but it's not a school shooting, he kills a bunch of motherfucker with bow and arrow, he's so evil and shit, so basically what the movie's about, really, is the mom dealing with this fucking thing, it shows her after the tragedy, when the whole town has dismissed her, and like, fucking people throw like fake blood on her door and shit and call her mother of a murderer and all this shit they flash back to when the kid was little and shit and i gotta say man like this movie when i saw it like i was a little bit it was just one of those movies that i won't say i was bored by it but it had some dull spots but the way it, the way it just wrapped up man the emotion of it the thought of it and shit like it just left you with like a real fucked up f- sick feeling in your stomach and shit man like i almost felt like some evil motherfuckers did some evil shit to me and stuff but it just it was that kind of movie it had that level of detail of filmmaking and depth and emotion man like all these months later man like i seen this movie about 4 months ago movie still sticking with me man like and every time i see that motherfucker who played the teenage version of the evil kid like i see him in new movies now like i can't get over it man like he's just scary looking just it's just a normal like little skinny motherfucker but he scares the shit out of me so we need to talk about kevin is on my list for top favorite of the year cool man so so that guy's always gonna be kevin to you. yeah he's always gonna be a slimy little motherfucker with piss running down his fucking pants and shit you know you know what man Th- thank you for that review because they fucking totally didn't do that movie justice when they were fucking advertising. I no. had no idea it was a fucking horror movie. Yeah. It was touted as some fucking, 
independent drama. I knew it was about a troubled kid, but I mean, that's as far as they went with the advertising, man. That sounds fucking Yeah, awesome, man, and like, man. the thing is, is like, I yeah. feel like with the trailer, they just should have showed you, like, like, what he really did, because the movie don't hide it. Like, the movie starts out, like, because they play, they play it out of order, and they actually, though, the whole movie, they keep flashing it back between yeah. all these different time periods. But they show you right from the get-go that she's, like, a fucking, like, woman living on her own who has a disgraced son and shit that the whole town hates, and he becomes, like, the town boogeyman, kind of, like, and shit. You know what I mean? So Sounds fucking awesome, dude. Dude, T- Tilda Swinton and John C. Riley are fucking the bomb. I feel bad for John C. Riley because when you're such a great fucking indie actor, and then you do a fucking movie like a sellout movie i mean you know years from now people are gonna go up to john c riley and be like hey what's the bracket ralph that's all he's gonna be known yeah about. He, ralph. he's gonna be opening up supermarkets in 10 years with the wreck it ralph costume on and shit but yeah yeah i mean j- but, just like fucking alec guinness hated star wars because exactly. everyone just thought he was over one kenobi and, but exactly. yeah, hey it's the nature of the business people but hey great great fucking review and recommendation i think that's awesome dude i, I definitely want to check that shit out yeah man give it a rent like i mean that's how i saw i rented it because it was like a little release didn't come out a lot of theaters so you're going to have to see that shit on dvd but it's it's worth a dollar rental or whatever the fuck oh hell yeah hell yeah cool cool all right, man. So, I'm going to go next with mom. Yeah, mine? do number All 10 right. off your favorite list, man. You know what, though? Here's the thing, man. Like, like I I, I did the top 10, but I, I just went from January to fucking December. You know, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't do, like, I didn't qualify which one's better. Oh, th- so, that's fine. Right. Like, honestly, like, the top three on my top favorite kind of are my top three, but numbers four through 10, you could just shuffle that shit up. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could toss it like a fucking salad, man. <laughs> exactly, man. So, earlier this year, way early this year, came out a movie called a Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance starring Nicolas Cage. This was a sequel to uh, fucking Ghost Rider. Came out a few years ago. And uh, here's what I liked about that movie. First of all, it's a fucking superhero hero with a fucking skull on fire. And I really don't get how people don't fucking watch this movie now. People fucking hate it. It was a box office failure. Fucking critics hated it. And, like, if this came out in the fucking 80s, man, people would be all over that shit, man. Fucking a skull on fire, dude. Exactly, man. And the mean, se- yeah, and the sequel was made by the crank guy, so they was flying around on roller skates exactly. while cars were crashing and shit. Yeah. These are some real filmmakers, man. They really are. And, and the thing is, like, unfortunately, this is, this is, like, the sad irony of it all. This movie could not have come out in the 80s because they couldn't do this shit without CGI. And I'm, I'm actually an opponent in general, of CGI, but you cannot fucking make this movie without CGI. You, you couldn't make it in the fucking 80s. It'd be really fucking hard. You might have to have, like, a fucking claymation Ghost Rider or whatever. I don't know. But the point is, it came out two decades later than it should have come out. So everyone's desensitized now. They're fucking sellouts. They're, oh, I don't want to see this fucking movie by this fucking, you know... <laughs> Skull on well, fire. Well, well, let, let's just... Come on, man. Let's just call it out like it is, man. Fucking... Man, all these fucking um, whatever nerds on the internet, man, they're all making fun of Nicolas Cage. Listen, man, I get it. Nicolas Cage is a weird looking motherfucker. He may or may not have dabbled into some fucking heroin, depending on if you leave some tabloids and shit. Right, and, right. And, and his hair might have fell out in his late 20s or whatever. And he might be wearing some wig now. But this motherfucker is a good actor, man. Like, he'll do crazy shit. He'll put himself in a crazy frame of mind. You know what I mean? Like, he'll just. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, he was like totally Fu Manchu from fucking Werewolf Soldiers of whatever, whatever the SS. I mean, like, <laughs> exactly. Like, like, the thing is, like, the, 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 basically the filmmakers tapped into his craziness, and he went with it. And some people might say, oh, that's just Nicolas Cage being Nicolas Cage. Well, first of all, who cares if it is? But second of all, he fucking went with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, let, 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 let's exploit this kind of bizarre actor, kind of like uh, fucking, uh, what's that dude's name? Shit. Fucking uh, George McFly, you know. Oh, Crispin Glover, crazy yeah, motherfucker. He, he's, he's, you, ever, you ever see it when you was a kid, Crispin Glover, trying to fucking karate kick David Letterman in the face on fucking Late Night with David Letterman? And got, late show, really? Did yeah, he, he tried... For- yeah, he got banned for a long time, and then, like, maybe, like, ten years later, they let him come back on. He just explained, like, I was just trying to show you some karate shit, Dave. I wasn't really, I was nervous. I was a little bit drunk or whatever. I wasn't really trying to fuck you up, man. Fucking Drew Barrymore can show her fucking titties and shit. Yeah, man, David, I love David Letterman, but why are you such a pussy, David Letterman? Like, yeah, you you love when Drew Barrymore jumps on a table, shows some tits. 
But you're so afraid. Like, it was so pussy, man. Like, Crispin Glover, you can see this shit on YouTube. Crispin Glover, he done tried, he was, like, kicking in the air and dancing around her herky-jerky. And another thing, too, which I feel bad about Crispin Glover, but I guess maybe he should have known better, was he showed up at that time doing that interview as the character from the movie he was promoting. Like, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So he yeah. just was too into the role and shit. And what happened was he started kicking up into the air and shit. And Letterman was, like, behind the desk. It wasn't like he was going to get kicked in the face. Well, but let, yeah, Letterman Letterman walked off the fucking set, had the producers what? come in and yeah, he had the producers come in and he like like in the middle of the interview, Letterman just fucking threw it to commercial and shit. And then he just fucking man, walked off the stage and shit. Yeah. First come on. Of all, man. Kristen Glover needed a better fucking agent at the time. He should have never let him walk out there with exactly. that damn fucking movie. And fucking like you said, man, Letterman needs to fucking man up. And you know what? Who cares if he gets kicked in the face? That's fucking ratings, man. Maybe, maybe, maybe well, he would have gotten the Tonight Show slot if he took it, if he fucking took a chop in the face. Well, I mean, how many times have you and me been at parties where motherfuckers are fighting chairs and couches and chainsaw and fucking tables in half and shit? Like we we didn't come running out the door like a couple of bitches and shit. Like we well, we, well, we we raised our bear to that shit. We encouraged that shit, really. <laughs> You know me, man. Half half the fucking fillies I've been with, I fucking go up and work with them with a little fake karate chop. They like that shit. Exactly. And there's something sexy about that fucking crazy ass martial arts shit. But anyway, nonetheless, point is, uh, my my first pick was Ghost Rider. Came out early in the year, R rated. I love I love the fucking. No, it movies. wasn't R rated, man. It was R rated. It was not R rated. You kidding me? I uh, let, let me let me let me put on my crazy. reporter shit right now because from what I believe, I think it was the first movie. Neville, Dean, and Taylor that, that was not our Oh, you know what? You're right, because we talked about this shit. We had a conversation because yeah. there was only one F-bomb, and it was by the fucking devil at the very end of the movie. Exactly. Right. Let me see. Right. Let me see. Right. Hey, you I'm know what? Sure. America, that being said, I take that back. That's one of the most hardcore PG-13 comic book movies you'll ever have the pleasure of seeing. I fucking love it, man. Go see Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. Tippy top of my list for 2012. And you know what? I, I'm a little biased. I actually was a big old Ghost Rider fan of the comic books, man. I, I yeah, I liked it. Even I, the first movie, which everybody pissed on, and I understand it was a little bit corny with the love story and shit, yeah. but like, even the first movie wasn't that bad. Come on. No, it was good. You know, you know the problem, it was just too, it was, uh, it came out, you know, decades after when it should have, because nobody cares about Flaming Skulls anymore. Exactly. Except us, but uh, I fucking loved it. Yeah, it was PG-13. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It says... Rated PG thirteen man, for man intense is- intense sequences of action and violence, some disturbing images in language. So there you go. I mean, just warning: if you love PG thirteen films and you don't care about a rating of a movie, we will rag PG thirteen hardcore and shit. Mm-hmm. But every, hey, man, every now and then there's exception to rule, and a good PG thirteen movie will come out. No, this, this was hardcore. I'm, I'm actually, I was surprised it was PG-13, but yeah, it's 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 a great comic book movie. It's a great Nicolas Cage movie, and the special effects are just fucking insane. They're awesome. So yeah, I, I like that movie a lot, and I'm glad it came out. I'm glad they had a sequel to it. So way to go, Crip Boys. Exactly. All right, I'm gonna jump on number nine on my list, and really, this this movie could have been number five on my list because I'm like I said, man, it, it, when you love shit. I would not want to give up any of this top ten of films. I would not like want to say like, oh, these movies shouldn't have come out. Like I love all these movies, but number nine, I rated the Collection, which we just talked about, the sequel to the Collector. If you haven't seen the Collector, get on the Collector. It's awesome, and didn't see the Collection, which is just going to take the shit to another level. But number nine on my list, top favorite, twenty twelve, was the Collection. And yeah. I got I got to say, man, for a change, I was happy to see some low budget, gory shit in a theater. I got to go to the theater and drink a soda pop and shit. And eat some popcorn and shit. Normally, you just got to stay at home and drink beer and watch these type of movies on DVD. So, like, I'm sorry it didn't work out. It wasn't a huge hit at the box office or whatever, you know, for the distributor. But I just, I did appreciate it was like, it was like 1987 all over again going to see a fucking badass horror movie in the theater. You know what I mean? Awesome, man. It's it's nice to see that some guys are out there still making shit that, you know, that it's real horror going back to the days. It's it's not you know I mean it's it's an homage because it don't take place in fucking 1987. It's a fucking modern day exactly. movie. It happens now, and, like yeah, but they definitely use like the you know fucking shit and elements that they would use from the 80s horror movies that we all fucking grew to love. So that's awesome, dude. I mean, you know, I'll go ahead. And that's actually on my list too. I, I, that's my number two. I haven't even seen it, but I, I know I know it's gonna <laughs> well, be awesome. I, well, I, I well, know what it is. I mean, come on, fucking November R-rated horror movie sequel. Yeah. 
Well, fucking dude, and and I, you know, I wanted to see it. I tried, but I know. Man, it, I will it, say, it I was, out of the theaters. I will say this. I guarantee you that you will own this movie someday. I guarantee it. Hey, I'm, I'm sure you're yeah. right. I'm sure you're right. I can't it's wait. It's that good. Josh Stewart's an amazing actor. So go see it, America. You got the stamp of approval from uh, Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Take the official Hillbilly DVD Reviews Challenge. Take the tampon out of your pussy. Don't be afraid to tell your girlfriend, your wife, whatever, that you want to go see the collection. You want to see some motherfuckers chopped up and pinned to a wall and fucking booby trap spikes coming out. All kinds of shit, man. Yeah, man. And if you're a girl who likes shit even better, man. Yeah, fucking go to the theater, pull your pants down, and diddle yourself. Who gives a shit, man? Oh, shit. Tell your fucking pussy-ass boyfriend to grow a pair. Yeah, it's a grow a pair, motherfucker. We ain't gonna see Gerard Butler fucking soccer moms. We're gonna go see the collector (laughs) fucking people up. You're not doing me a favor by taking me to see Magic, my mofo. Yeah, fuck fucking Magic. Magic. Don't... Okay, like... We don't have the time to go no, to, no, yeah, to, on, to, to the depths of the worthlessness of Cheney Tatum. We don't. We don't. I, if that's his name. But anyway, what's next on your list for best of? What about you? Didn't you give a number nine yet? Yeah, man. I, I, I followed you up with the collection. I, I, I basically piggybacked you. Okay, you piggyback. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right, number eight on my list. Favorite, whatever. That's my boy, Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah, man. Like... A lot of people just done pull their pants down and shit all over this movie before they even see Like, here's another thing, too, about follow the sheep mentality of America. Everybody hated this movie without seeing it. How are you going to tell me a movie's bad when you ain't fucking seen it? Like, come on, man. Like, yeah, Adam Sandler was doing his goofy Boston accent and shit. But it, this, I mean, they pulled out some original comedy. They had extended roles. Like, not even cameos, but real roles by Todd Bridges and Vanilla Ice and shit. This movie was funny and good, man. Yeah, it was. You know what? I'll go ahead and just keep the trend going just to have some uniformity. That's on my list, too. But as we know, I don't have like a... Your, yours is in a set order, so you'll... It's, it's, you'll... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a set order, so it's better to talk about it now than now, you know... Th- then to talk now. about it twice is what you're saying. <laughs> People listening might think that we're fucking repeating ourselves. And exactly, shit. exactly. So, uh, so, you know, I'll go ahead and piggyback on that, too. And, and by the way, uh, you know, this is cool because like like we said earlier, and this is the guy's honest story, we didn't fucking see each other's list. I had no idea no. I was going to pick this movie. Goat didn't know I was going to pick this movie. That's definitely I, my fucking top favorites, dude. I wrote um, my shit down on a little index card, and I put it in the pocket of my jeans, and I was hiding that shit all week. I wasn't going to let anybody see that shit. Yeah, man, I fucking got a bill from a credit card in the mail, and I wrote that shit on the envelope with a fucking orange go. cradle of the crown. But anyway, so here, here's why I like fucking That's My Boy. First of all, as 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 you guys might know, new listeners might not know, but check out the YouTube videos. I'm, I'm a huge fan of early Adam Sandler. I fucking love Billy Madison. So this, to me, was like Adam Sandler finally doing something funny after fucking 20 20- years of horse shit and i don't know i don't know the reason i don't know you know maybe adding andy sandberg talked him into whatever but it's just extreme comedy i cannot express it any better than that like like you know, I, andy sandberg is great yeah go ahead i was gonna no, say andy sandberg is, is a straight man that's Finally, that's know. one thing i gotta say about doing this podcast is like it's i mean i don't know it's hard not to talk each other over each other so i'm sorry for um, the listeners or whatever but like yeah, like like I just want to throw in that like personally I draw when it comes to Adam Sandler, I draw the line after Happy Gilmore. I, I love Billy Madison. Happy Gilmore was kinda like not as extreme, but it was still good. And like once he hit the water boy and on, I was just, I jumped off the fucking boat and then some. But I'm back on the train with that's my boy. And if Adam Sandler here's the drawing line, if Adam Sandler makes an R rated movie, I'll see it. I won't see his, P- like, I don't see PG-13 dumb shit like Jack and Jill. Like, oh, he plays a fucking woman in drag. Who gives a fuck, man? Which, 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 which by the way, uh, you know what? That actually was universally hated by everyone. I think maybe that's when the shit hit the fan. I think maybe he's like, you know what? I'm not funny. I'm a fucking idiot. I better just, I better just do what I do best and just fucking ham it up and R-rate it up. And, um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I, I agree, man. He, he fucking set a high bar with this movie. There's no reason to ever ever see anything less than a hard r-rated movie from happy medicine productions because right because he set the bar and uh and you know what it's it's fucking raunchy but it's art i was reading shit online like people hated it because of the subject matter it's about 
you know, it's, it's got pedophilia issues. It's got fucking incest issues. But yeah, it's a fucking like, comedy, like, man. I mean, it's so lighthearted. It's fucking hilarious. So. Yeah, you ain't supposed to take this shit seriously. Come on now. I don't know, man. And if you do, fuck you. So, so yeah, man, that's cool. That, that's on both of our lists, and we agree it's extreme comedy. It's, I mean, look, dude, we fucking drink. We love to fucking laugh. This is a funny-ass fucking movie. So, yeah, I, I mean, and like, that's the thing is, like, I mean, not to harp on it too much, but the difference between PG-13 and R, like, like Adam Sandler, like, yeah, he'll make his good little bedtime stories for you to take your four-year-old to and shit, but he'd rather be raunch. He, like, come on, man, he's married, he has kids, like, you think he really wants to make a movie where he's playing a movie with some fake kids playing his kids and he's got to do boring shit, or do you think he wants to do a movie where he's, like, filming streams in a strip club and having big fake titties rubbed in his face and shit. And, like, that's the difference. It ain't yeah. just funny because it's either PG-13 or R. Like, these people are artists, man, whether you like it or not. And they don't want to do half-ass shit. You know what I mean? Like, they want to do hardcore shit, have tits in their face, fucking throw yeah, fake jizz all over. Like yeah, Exactly, yeah. And, and and the thing is, like, I mean, I wouldn't even say this was fucking pure shock. I mean, I've, I've seen way worse i think it was shocking because people have been watching watered down bullshit for fucking 15 years and that's why it was the first time the first time sandler's drinking booze and fucking cussing and it, I, that's why it was shocking because parents took their kids to see it you know after, after fucking watching bedtime stories and remote control and all that other bullshit oh, remote control fuck yeah so so yeah I, Honestly, that's why I was shocking. If 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 it was a cast of fucking nobodies, it wouldn't have gotten so much negative publicity. But Adam Sandler kind of doomed himself all these years by doing these family friendly comedies. But the point is, it's fucking brilliant, man. They got Vanilla Ice, they got Todd Bridges, many many eighties references. So you know, I, I guess we're dating ourselves. But this really takes no, us back. No, to yeah. If you're between the ages, I would say right now. In 2012, if you're between the ages of 28 and 40, like yeah, you, yeah. like this movie's like really aimed at you, man. Exactly, exactly. I I agree. So yeah, we I mean we spent a lot of time on this one right now, but it's just I, I think I think we were just both so impressed that they could actually still have a mainstream fucking you know big you know big studio fucking comedy that's fucking hilarious. I mean, it almost reminded me of like when Old School came out. You know, that doesn't happen too often, so. So way way to go, Sandler. Welcome back and fucking keep doing this shit. Don't don't listen to the critics. Keep making these fucking hardcore R rated movies. Yeah, fuck it, man. All right, for the sake of moving on, what what's another what's another one on your list, Phil? All right, man. You know what? Uh since since I'm going in order of when they shit the shit that came out for the most part, and also I tend to like comedies a little bit more. I fucking I got Wanderlust on mine. That was pretty much the the whole cast of the state <laughs> making a fucking yeah. movie. Yeah, but, I saw that shit. Jennifer see, Aniston is hot in it, man. Dude, yeah. she really was, dude. Oh, but shit. I, I thought it was fucking awesome. I love that movie. And, dude, she, dude, it was so hardcore. It was R-rated. It was hardcore. Fucking Aniston fucking is the one that cheated on Paul Rudd. He he didn't go through with it. Exactly. She was taking Whatever. all that Justin Throat dick and shit. Nah, yeah, but it was, dude... Honestly, it's it's a, it's a, it's it, it's such a weird title and it's such a weird premise for a movie and you know many people didn't see it they didn't get it they didn't understand what it was going to be about. Yeah, I thought I, Jordan Peele was awesome in it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, fucking from uh, Key and Peele. And yeah, Key and Peele. It, it was great, man. But yeah, like I said, it's, it's pretty much the half the cast of the state. And those of you who remember that old fucking sketch comedy show on MTV? They, they pretty much made this movie. I mean, I, I can't even begin to tell you the plot or what it's about, but it's it's just so it's so smart, it's so good, it's so it's it's not like extreme comedy, but it's really fucking funny. And you know, there's kind of a message to it, but not not that I give a fuck about that. But you know, it's it's honestly it's it, nice it, it has a story with some emotion to it, is what you're trying to Basically, say. Basically, yeah. But I mean, t- 2012 really impressed me by having so many R-rated mainstream comedies. So I really enjoyed that. So yeah, that, that, there it is. I don't have too much to say about it, but you guys out there, you know, you fucking know Aniston, you know Paul Rudd. If you guys, if you guys know the state, maybe if you're younger viewers, listeners, you probably fucking know uh, Reno nine one one probably better than the state. So think of it like that. Fucking Thomas Lennon, Carrie fucking Kenny. Yeah, we're talking about those people. Hey, hey man, fucking, I don't know. I I watch every Jennifer Aniston fucking movie with my pants around my ankles. So you you don't even have to keep selling it to me. But and, and, yeah, I mean, yeah, she, I mean, she's fucking hot, dude. Is, is she not like the hottest chick who doesn't ever have to get naked? But it seems like she always gets naked. Exactly. Oh man, like fucking 
talk about fucking boner fucking patrol and fucking horrible bosses. Fuck Holy shit, know. man. Oh, my God. I knew you were going to say that. Dude. And, like, I'm not even, like, a big, like, whatever fan of these, like, skinny Hollywood actresses. Which, but, I mean, she's, like, 44 years old, and she's got it going on, man. Fuck it. Man, something about her. So, so look, even if you don't think it's a funny movie, man, if you have a fucking penis exactly, works, go see that fucking movie and get ready. So, and yeah. you know what was weird too? Remember that weird scene where she kind of had like that big canvas like shirt on, and it wasn't revealing at all. But then she like squatted down in the yard and pissed like a dog. And I thought it was Did like, it? Yeah, yeah, I thought it was like a weird scene for Jennifer Aniston to like do a, in a movie. But I gotta admit, man, as weird as it was, it kind of made my dick twitch. Well, you, you know, you know, you know what? Me too. And you know why? I think it's because she's got this like persona that's perceived about her in life that she's such a fucking prude maybe because of her personal choices in life but like she's not afraid to do shit in movies exactly now, granted, granted we just say she don't get naked but man she she does a lot of fucking interesting shit that yeah that uh you know make you make you feel good down there yeah so. she she's one of my favorite actresses even beyond the whole boner like scale of it like she's i still like her she's interesting man well you know like her i mean you know i'm kind of going off on tangent here but like like, there were fucking six people on Friends, right? Half yeah. of them went one way, half of them went the other way. And I gotta say, like, her and Lisa Kudrow, they, they, they're they fucking hardcore, man. They'll, they'll, they they love the acting, they love the art, they'll, you know, they're, they're they're so prepared to throw their friends' roots behind and do crazy shit. Lisa Kudrow, not quite as successful, but in a way, that's better, because she does some really fucking crazy shit. So, you know, Matthew Perry, obviously, is a fucking sellout, but, um... I don't know, man. I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just saying, you know. You, All right. Well, well we, we got a long list. Well, I, I get it, man. It's, once you get to talking, you just your thoughts are rambling and shit. Like, let's just jump to the next one on my see. list. I want to go on number seven of my favorite movies of the year. I got the movie Safe with Jason fucking Staten. This movie, the preview is. Yeah, this movie, the preview is playing forever. It came out. Nobody went to see it. I guess because it came out like a month or like a week before the avengers so everybody was in line dressed up for captain america but this movie's fucking awesome i love fucking jason fucking staten i love jason staten he came back in this movie he plays a homeless fucker he's just like rolling around the streets all filthy and shit he used to be an ex-cop he gets involved in a big scheme and shit he has to kill a bunch of gangsters there's like a scene at the end of the movie where jason staten kills about 30 motherfuckers he's just badass i love safe man yeah, man, uh, you know, p- piggybacking once again, and I haven't seen your list, obviously. This is, um, you know, it's on my list, too. Um, I had to wait for it to come out on DVD because uh, fucking ran out of the theaters too fast. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a basic story, almost similar to The Professional, but, I mean, there's nothing new under the sun these days, man. It's like, okay, fine. It, it doesn't matter if the story's original or not. It, it was a Jason Statham twist on it. He did a great job. Very hardcore. He wasn't just homeless, man. He had a whole backstory. He was a former cop, disgraced cop, but like noble cop. Uh, very, very awesome. Um, one of my favorite scenes was the end, the climax. I'm not going to tell you guys what fucking happens, but... Uh, There's some it, shit with a vault and shit. Like, it just gets badass. I can tell you who lives and who dies, but fucking... It's, it's definitely on my favorites, too. I fucking well, love Well, I, I will. Come on, man. It's a Jason Staten movie. We ain't ruining shit. Everybody in the movie dies except for Jason fucking Staten. Of, of course. Well, 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 shit, man. I mean, we, we fucking thought he died in fucking Crank, and then he's in Crank, too, so... Exactly. Like, the fucking, even if they did kill Jason Staten, he, he yeah. could come back for safe, too. Yeah. You don't all know. All right, all right. Rule, rule of thumb, Jason Statham don't die. But I'm not going to tell you how exactly the final fight goes i'm just saying just it's fucking awesome you know if you're watching blu-ray or dvd just be prepared to rewind that shit over and over again because you're gonna fucking love that it's fucking man fucking ah I, i'm speechless man i'm like, jason I'm fucking like, stay in my right, can't right, die you that's, silly that's cunts say, man. i mean dude he's, he's he's everybody's fucking man crush female i love crush. Jay- i love jason stay like i don't know about man crush like i really don't want to hang out with them and drink beers with them and shit Cause like he always looks like he's chain smoking and shit. Like he probably would smoke me out a little bit, but I would definitely sit across the fucking bar and watch him beat fucker silly like all day yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and, and going back to what you said, he's probably a cock blocker too. Fucking, you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh yeah, like... J- Jason Statham getting all the fucking pussy. <laughs> yeah, you, and... you, if you've seen the movie Piranha, the fucking the really really hot British, like there's a bunch of porn stars and shit in that movie, okay, but the okay, really okay. hot British chick. Uh, Kelly Brook, man, that gets naked. Oh, she's so fucking hot. That's Jason <laughs> Staten's ex girlfriend, man. Like, hey. like, like, take a look at her, and and like, how much of a badass motherfucker do you have to be to throw her to the side? Like, when you're tired of fucking a girl like that, like you know you're a badass motherfucker, man. He just fucking throws him away, man, as fast as he gets him. But like, Jason you know, let's Staten, say you're friends with him, you're hanging out at the bar, even if you're smoking with him and shit, you find a girl that actually likes you for whatever fucked up reason, and he's talking to you, and you're like, ah, nail this shit. You know Statham is gonna find a way to steal her from you, man. It's just, Exactly. Come on, Lou, why are you gonna fuck her? Like him? Come on, Lou, my big fucking Jason Statham <laughs> caught me. I, fucking... I was an Olympic swimmer. I was an Olympic swimmer. I jumped off a fucking diving board, and there was a transporter, and she, come on, love, come on, oh, give it a go, why don't you? And it's over, man, then it's over. Man, they so. say you know Jason Statham's fucking your girlfriend, and you can't even really be too pissed off about it, really. I mean, because you know. like it, because you like his movies so much and shit. Can't be mad, no. But just, just don't, don't make him a friend for real. So, all right, man. Let's, let's move on. All right, let's let's keep it moving. How about one off your list? If you got another one, I keep piggybacking on you, but let me let me get one that you might not have, man. All right. So I haven't even talked to you about this. I don't know if you saw it or not. I fucking had to wait forever for it to come on DVD. Fucking going back to comedies again, Casa de mi Padre with fucking Will Ferrell. All right, now oh, oh, know, oh, I, I don't want to fuck up your thing real quick, but I, like I would like to find the motherfucker who did this to me and punch him in the nose. I don't know if you, you probably remember when I t- remind you about this. I want to see this I movie. To the theater. I want to right? see this movie at the fucking cheap theater. It didn't play at the regular theater here. I had to wait for a film print to roll around the cheap theater. I went in. I paid my dollar fifty. I sat down. Number, man. No shit, man. The first minute and a half of the movie played, and the film burned up. I thought it was a fucking joke. I thought Will Ferrell was doing a joke in the movie, and it was like, then the movie's gonna come on. The projector broke off. The film burned up. They kept saying, okay, ten more minutes. We'll get the film rolling again. I never got to see it, man. Fuck. I never got to Dude, see I it. T- I told you not to go back to the thing. I don't know why you fucking insist on going there, man. I never fucking Because I'm a fucking dumb fucking motherfucker, I guess. Dumb, I don't man. know. You, but you, Dude, are you telling me you never checked it out on DVD or Blu-ray? Ever? Well, no, well, no. Here's the thing, man. Because I used to rent, I used to rent movies from Redbox, okay. Yeah. But at, in my town, like, like you have video stores in your town, right? My town, yeah. like, I don't have video stores. Like, like the Blockbuster closed down and shit that I used to go to. So I have to, if I want to get a disc, I have to either get it from Redbox or Netflix. And Redbox, dude, it's so crowded here, and all the movies are rented out. Like, you know me, dude. I I was doing Redbox before you were doing Redbox. Yeah, man. You, but you fucking fuck me into Redbox, dude. I, yeah, I like. To- yeah, I can't do it anymore, man. Like, the lines are long. The movies are always checked out. So I got it on my Netflix list, but I'm being a cheap motherfucker. I ha- Like, I don't do that streaming bullshit, and we'll get into this another show. I don't do streaming bullshit. I get the disc in the mail, but I only have the one Blu-ray out at a time playing and shit like that. So it's on my list, but it's just, you know what I mean? Uh, all right, man. You know, look, we're not going to hold it against you. All right, it's all good. Watch Motherfucker, I tried. I got off my ass and went to see, like, like, okay, you now. You tried to see the theater. No shit, man. No one else was there. Oh, that fuck made no money. Oh, okay, like, just to finish my bullshit story, like, I went there, and I bought a small popcorn and a soda and shit, and, like, I spent, like, $9 on food, and then the movie didn't even fucking play, and they came in, they tried to give me, like, one pass for a free movie. I was like, fuck this, and then, like. And not only that, but I waited in the theater for 45 minutes because I kept saying 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. And then eventually everybody left, and I was the last one. So and eventually they came in and said, okay, like we can't get it working. So I went to the guy, and I was like, man, I paid 9 bucks for popcorn and shit, which I normally don't do, but I just wanted to come in and enjoy this movie and shit. I was like yeah, – I was like – I was like, I'm not asking for a refund, but I was like, can you give me a couple more free passes? Because this is the dollar fifty theater, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you like paid like a, like a thousand percent more for the snacks than your fucking for the ticket, get. right? And then these At motherfuckers. Was so then he's like, oh, I check with the manager. I can give you like your money back. So I got one free pass and I got my dollar fifty back, and I spent nine dollars on shitty over. And it was burnt popcorn too. And it just, I don't know, man. Like, oh my fuck god, it. dude, that was like just. Sounds like the fucking worst night ever, man. You, and I'm not you even, got, like, playing jacked. this up for the podcast, like, being silly. Like, that's really what happened. Fuck it, man. No, Whatever. No, but, hey, you, you, I've heard but, 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 no, I have not seen the movie. I still want to see the movie. Please talk about the movie. Please 
tell people that it's good and like they should see it and shit. All right, man. All right, man. Well, look. All right, America. Depending on where you live, you know, you, you might you might live in a big city with uh, has like uh, some Spanish stations. I don't know where you guys are, but or maybe you just know about Spanish stations like fucking Telemundo or whatnot. But like, um, they're, they they specialize in what's called a fucking novella. All right, that's kind of like a soap opera, like Days of Our Fucking Lives, General Hospital. Well, anyway. They're 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 known for having like super attractive people and unrealistic situations. Very very fucking dramatic, like overly dramatic. I mean, you know, talk about fucking incest from that's my boy shit like that. I mean, like that's that's like fucking serious shit in these fucking novels. Well, anyway, Casa de Mi Padre is basically a homage slash spoof of the fucking novellas on these fucking Spanish networks. All right, now. Even if you don't know that, it's a fucking funny movie. You don't have to be inside to get the joke. It's just fucking funny. I'm talking about like fucking going back to Naked Gun days. You know what I mean? Like when, but this is like R-rated Naked Gun. This ain't PG-13 fucking Leslie Nielsen bullshit. This is fucking Will Ferrell at his finest. Which is why, which is why, and I think the goat will agree. I kind of have a love hate relationship with Will Ferrell. The guy, the, the guy will fucking say yes to anything to get a fucking paycheck. Yeah, I mean, like, like that's the thing is, like, there's a million Will Ferrell movies. A, a little tiny handful of them are great. Ninety percent of them are dog shit. But I will give him his props, man. When he gets it right, Will Ferrell makes some awesome movies, man. Yeah, yeah, and 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 this is one of those gems, man. I mean, he he and fucking Adam McKay produced it. I believe, and, you know, there's a great cast in it. So, I mean, th- this is definitely a hands-on thing. You know, this, this is definitely a movie where Will Ferrell was like, okay, the, the rent's paid up, fucking gas bill is paid up. I, 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 got, I got some fucking time to fucking spare and actually do something good. So, you know, th- you know, you like old school, you like Frank the Tank bullshit, you're going to fucking love this movie. Oh, and by the way, it's 100% in Spanish. Will Ferrell speaks Spanish the whole movie. There ain't no English. There ain't no English the whole fucking movie. There's subtitles. So, you know, being a fucking hillbilly DVD reviewer, I usually don't like the subtitle bullshit because if I can, I'm drinking, I'm, I don't, I don't, if I want to fucking read the book, I read a fucking book. But uh, it's fucking, it's awesome, man. You can check it out. It's hilarious. You know, pop that shit in. You can't. You fucking can't read it fast enough. You fucking rewind that shit and pause it, man. That's a yeah, man. Thing. Watch the movie in slow motion if you have to. Who gives yeah, a fuck? Man. Yeah, man. But it's, dude. It's 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 awesome, dude. It's it's hilarious, and I, I'm I'm actually looking forward to when the goat sees it. I want to hear his sentiments. See if he agrees, disagrees. Oh, oh dude. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I love. I only saw the credit sequence that had the song from I think it was Christina Aguilera. And I saw the very beginning where Will Ferrell picked up that little fake dummy cow. I loved it, man. I couldn't. Yeah, man. I couldn't wait. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I bought a ticket. I was sitting there. I couldn't wait to see more of it. And then I got cock blocked. He was prepared to sit there for ninety minutes in a stink ass stale movie theater oh, stank, with shitty burnt popcorn. He yeah. was prepared. And then they fucked him. So, Bullshit. dude, I'm sorry that happened, though. But I hope you get to see that one day, man. And you oh, too. I will. All right, man. We gotta keep this train rolling. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on my next list. We kind of briefly touched on this on what we were seeing, there, but number six on my list, favorite movies 2012. I got Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom. We kind of already covered it, but it just was yeah. a great, fun movie. I loved it, man. I love. I, and let me say, like, I love the mastery, if that's the right word of the filmmaking on display there. I love the fucking, you know, just the storytelling, the fucking, the camera angles. I love the original music produced for it. I love, if you stay through the whole end credits, keep that shit bumping, there's some cool shit where a kid says, okay, now time for some flute. And then like, boop, 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 boop. And there's like some flute shit. Now it goes side to side. If you got good surround sound, like the drums go side to side. It, it was fucking awesome, man. Like, I don't care if anybody fucking says Wes Anderson might be a little nerdy sweater, glasses wearing motherfucker. But he makes some good movies, man. You can't deny that. Uh, and as you guys can probably fucking guess, I this is on my list too. So yeah, I was I'm about just, to say, is it on your list yet? Yeah, it's on my list. I'm gonna I'm, I'm piggyback the goat. I'm gonna say this about it. I mean, it it, it wasn't my favorite Wes Anderson movie. I, I think it was the funniest. I know I know I'm repeating myself. Now I know that now the goat gets into the cinematography and and, and audio more than I do because uh, I pretty much have a fucking regular ass TV and no speakers. So oh no, you don't. Come on, bullshit. Hey, you hey, you, hey, you hey, ain't gonna hey. lie about. Fucking, all right, I'll, I'll break the fourth wall. Fucking, but, 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 that, that, that might incriminate me, though, 
be careful, man. I, you know, nah, I, I, well, okay, like, I, I don't know. I don't think the IRS can track you down and shit. But Phil D's has a 52-inch Sony fucking HD TV. It's awesome. He got speakers all over. Like, you sit down on the couch, you accidentally sit on a speaker. He's got so many speakers. Like, this motherfucker's got a good-ass home theater, man. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, that, that being said, <laughs> I don't even fucking know what I'm supposed to be looking at. I don't know if it's good or bad. All right. So I might as well be watching it on a fucking eight inch black and white kitchen TV. The point is, if it's a good movie, it's a fucking good movie, man. And going off subject, that reminds me when I was a, when I was a fucking kid before fucking DVD and VHS, they used to play fucking Star Wars fucking every Christmas. And I was just, I was fucking that shit, watch yeah. that. You remember that, dude? Oh, yeah. Like, like, oh, local, well, local, well local, to, to, to break the fourth wall even further, I remember in the old days. When you had a first fucking, when you got your first DVD player, you had a 13-inch little tube TV, and we used to watch movies on that, so, like, We didn't a, give a fuck. We didn't give a, and we was drinking and shit, we didn't give a fuck, and, like, the thing is, if a movie's good, you can watch it on the fucking back of your ass, and it don't matter. If a good movie's gonna shine out as a good movie, like, yeah, yeah, sometimes you go to the theater, and you see some 3D bullshit that impress you and stuff, and maybe it makes a movie, but for real movies... For timeless classic movies, you could watch the motherfuckers on a tube TV in your bedroom while you're half drunk, half asleep on a Saturday afternoon with a hangover, <laughs> and, and it's still it's still going to be an awesome movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that being said, like me and the goat are a great pair because we pretty much make up like a whole critic. Like I like the writing and acting better. He, you know, he. I mean, he likes that shit too. Don't get me wrong, but he's more. You know, he's he's a very well versed in the whole technical aspects of the shit. I don't even pay attention to that shit. The point is, it's a fucking great movie, man. Wes Anderson wrote a really brilliant movie. Great cast. I, I love seeing Edward Norton, who's kind of blacklisted these days for whatever reason. But yeah, I mean, sad, man. He plays, he plays a great, nerdy, insecure camp counselor. Bill Murray, God bless him. He's looking so fucking old, but man, he fucking... He's 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 a trooper, man. He, I mean, he he's he's awesome, man. Bill Murray is an old motherfucker, but instead of being all stodgy and being like, "I'm Bill Murray," like bring me some Oscar scripts, like he'll take a chance, man. He don't give a shit. Like he'll he'll just jump yeah. into a crazy movie. And maybe it works out and he gets critics applause, and maybe like they just say, and, "Fuck and you," maybe, you know. What I mean? And maybe not, man. But you know what? He's probably the only fucking SNL alum and fucking ghostbuster alum that actually gets it you know what i mean i mean he, he's not a sellout he's still working he does what he wants to do i'll and tell you he, one thing that's cool about bill murray is he won't do ghostbusters 3 but he'll make fun of ghostbusters and zombie land so that tells you how cool he is why don't we move on and uh, keep yeah let, let, let's keep it moving number five um a lot of people may disagree with me on this, but I, I like the fucking movie Haywire, directed by Steven Soderbergh, starring Gina Carano. And the reason I like it, people are like, Gina Carano is a terrible actor. Like, she fucking, they had to redub her lines and deepen her voice and all this shit. This is why I love Gina Carano. She's basically like Steven fucking Seagal with big titties. You know what I mean? Like, she's just like a female that's going to fuck you up. And she puts her, like, mixed martial arts training. Like, she grabs motherfuckers, wraps her big thighs around motherfuckers' heads, punches her fucking heads in and shoots them in the face and shit. Yeah, this, yeah, wo yeah, yeah, yeah. this woman is not fucking around at all. And, and you know what? Like, everyone criticized the fuck out of her for her lack of acting skills. I'm watching this movie... And I, I'm not I'm not seeing a fucking martial art fucking woman acting her first movie. I'm watching the character. I don't think she yeah. fucking pulled it off. Man. And you, and you gotta saying? you gotta think of like what it would take for a woman in the real life to be like this fucking mercenary and be able to kill at will and do all this shit. She would have to be cold. She would have to be calculated. She would have to be very rational and like I mean I don't, like you can you yeah can... and and she'd have to be big as fuck too yeah. Man. I'm, I'm so she got sorry. big I'm, biceps, she got yeah. big thick legs, she got big titties, she'll beat your ass, man. I mean, I mean Angelina Jolie is lean and she's kind of cut, but man, you, you can't cast her in every single fucking movie yeah. about a fucking hardcore tree. You got you got to be able to kick ass. So good for Steven Soderbergh to cast a real fucking bodybuilding woman. You know exactly. What I mean? I well, mean, and there's a real fighter. She really fights in the ring, gets her face smashed in and all this shit. Like, exactly, exactly. You man. know, so and I gotta say, man, like, what I really liked about this movie and what I thought was smart was they took somebody who was the first movie, had no real acting experience and shit, but then they surrounded her with all these good fucking actors like Ewan McGregor and Bill Paxton and fucking Michael Douglas and fucking Antonio Banderas and shit. So, like, 
they try to make it a good movie too. They weren't just like, but the thing I liked about it is how matter of fact it was. Like there was no movie where people were screaming and crying and all this shit. Like people are very cold. They're very calculated. They were just like, you, you know, they were man. And, 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 you know, that's a good point that they threw her in with so many good people because, you know, anyone who knows anything about movies at all, you know, you watch an interview with someone on fucking entertainment tonight even the most green actor or actress will tell you that they benefited from being in a movie with fucking uh, good actors. You know what I mean? Well, so yeah, I'm, and, and credit to the good actors on the flip yeah. side, too, because Michael Douglas was dying of some throat cancer and shit because he drank so much booze and shit, <laughs> smoked, smoked too many cigarettes. cigarettes. And shit. Yeah, so, so, and, like he was so, telling Catherine Zeta Jones to drop her panties too much that, like, yeah, yeah. but he still took you out of his busy time to jump out of a cancer ward and sneak out and go make fucking the little cameo in Haywire. And, like, I'm like going back to bashing fucking. Fucking, uh, fucking Ch- Channing, Channing, Channing. Yeah, he, yeah, Tatum, like, Channing. He sucks, man. But even he was okay in the movie. Awesome. I thought. I wish he would do a move, more movies like this. Because yeah, he, so, stop making corn dick shit and fucking right. jump into a real movie. I mean, I mean, I know, I know you're a fucking pretty boy with a big dick, but, <laughs> but come on, fucking act. You know, just... you, you know what? You know why I think people came down hard in this movie and didn't just not get because like I don't think it attracted the right audience. Like I think this movie really needed a fucking Steven Seagal, John Claude Van Damme fucking audience coming to go see it with some ass kicking. I think because it was Steven Soderbergh and he's well respected and he's well like known as a director and shit. I think people came in with their little art glasses on and bullshit, smoking their fucking clove cigarettes, and just, yeah, you, you yeah. know what I mean? I think the wrong crowd, and they walked out like, that was not a movie for me. It's like, no, nah, man, this movie is for some beer drinking motherfuckers. Like, it might be a little slow paced, but it, there's always an action scene right around the corner, but, goddammit. But, but you know what, man? It was actually for everybody, because if you actually paid attention to listen to it, it's a smart fucking spy thriller fucking movie. You know what yep. I mean? So... Yeah, you can you can be a beer drinking hillbilly and love the action scenes, but you can fucking be a fucking glasses wearing fucking nerdy movie critic. But you know what? People just people just refuse to accept that, and 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 that's too bad because they missed out on a fucking awesome movie. Yeah, so. man. Like you know, just you know, a lot of people when this movie came out, and I even saw TMZ. They ran after Steven Soderbergh in the airport and asked him why the movie failed. If you got to ask a movie like why this movie failed, it was because of you, motherfucker. You keep everybody being oh shit finicky yeah. and pussy like whatever man just drink some beer and see you haywire man come on now you fucks exactly give it another, even if you saw it and hated it give it another chance come on man come on trevor quit quit hating man give haywire another chance i saw this Damn. shit i saw this shit twice in the theater i saw it in the regular theater at nighttime i paid a lot of money to see it and then i saw it again at the dollar 50 theater and it was just as good and i loved it man Dude, I red boxed the shit out of that movie, and I fucking you enjoyed fucking, it. Fucking, you, you knocked the bottom out of the red box pussy when you rented that motherfucker. That, that little slot, that thing was all busted and loose by the time you was done renting okay. Haywire. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Like, you got a controversial one on your list, or do you want me? Because I think you know the controversy that I'm pulling out, because this is well, a... I do, I do, I do, but, um... Well, okay, this this isn't controversial, but it leads the way there because I All know. All right, let's it's transition on, to the tra- controversy. I know it's not on your list, but I also know you might not disagree 100%. It, it just a little, little deviation. I actually saw fucking uh, Seeking a Friend for the End of the World. That's on my list of best. That's Steve fucking Carell. You know, I'm a fucking. I, I love apocalyptic movies, and this is definitely about the end of the world. This ain't no fucking, you know, fake. You know, it might be, it might not be. No, this was the end of the fucking world. What I liked about it was one, it was R rated. It was very mature. It it it, it, it took a very serious subject and uh, you know, very ser- serious situation and kind you know kind of kind of made it realistic. And yeah, I mean, I, I, I get I guess most fucking sellouts would say it's a fucking love story, but really it's about how people would act at the end of the at the end of the fucking world. And I'm so glad that uh fucking Steve Office Carell quit the office and started doing real movies. But you know what? Little little bitty independent movie. I, I fucking liked it. I'm I'm glad it came out. I'm glad it had a pretty major release. Maybe it didn't make a lot of money, but No, it didn't man. Like I gotta say I was looking forward to this for months, but it was a time when there's a lot of movies out. I was go I, like I wasn't just staying away from the theater. I was seeing a bunch of movies but it just it got pushed out before I could see it, man. But I still want to see it. I'm still going to Netflix. I like I, I'm not really a Steve Carell fan, but I love Keira Knightley, even though she's anorexic. I still think she's an awesome oh, she's, actress. She's awesome in the movie. She's hot as fuck. And yeah. and, and by the way, dude, I, I'm with you, man. I mean, like Steve, I'm always gonna think of fucking The Office and fucking and corny uh, shit, cartoon shit he does. But like, like the thing is, 
he he almost has like the Will Ferrell complex. I mean, when he wants to do good shit, he does it. He does it fucking well. I just wish he'd do it more often. But check it out, see it, and and and, and if you're not a Steve Carell fan, it's not going to distract you from the fucking tone of the movie. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be any actor in the role, really. It could be. It could be. But but check it out, man. You know. Yeah, I, how, I can't wait to see it, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, see how people react. There's there's a fucking funny ass scene. They go to this chain restaurant, man. Kind of like Applebee's, and they're just fucking crazy, man. Like, like, like the the cool thing is, like, people still like they go about their daily lives because they don't want to fucking accept the fact that there's the end of the world. So they still go to work, they still dress up. You know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's interesting. It's it's you know it's it's, it's, it's it, it like sounds a like an original take on a type of movie that gets done a lot, but it sounds like they really came with some originality with it. Oh man, they they, they did, man. They, you know, who, whoever the fuck wrote it, they put a lot of thought into it, and it, it reminded me a lot of like a, a Romero zombie film. So. Definitely on my top ten list. I think go check it out, man. If if you fucking like it, we'll do a review on our fucking YouTube channel, man. Oh, for sure, man. Like we'll get that shit popping. Yeah, yeah, but 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 that's so that's that's not quite controversial, but it's 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 one of the first things that's actually not on our shared list. So yeah, keep it rolling on the hillbilly DVD reviews. Here we go. This is where the controversy is going to come into play, I believe, and some people are going to be calling me out and shit. But number four of my top favorite movies of 2012, I want to go with fucking Rock of Ages, motherfucker. I'm just throwing it on the table. There you go. Rock of Ages. There it goes right there. Rock of Ages. I, I, can't, I can't believe that's not a joke. It's not, it's, a, it's not a joke. I'm, I'm, I'm 100% serious. And, and let me explain to you why real quick. It's a musical, which as a stage musical, I always thought it sounded corny. They're going to do all these cock rock songs. But as a movie, whatever, like... It has, like, the different stories come together, and everybody, whatever their character's going through, they pick a cock rock song from the 80s, and they sing it out and shit. This movie is, like, they knew that the play, because, like, play fuckers are different from movie fuckers. Like, play fuckers will just buy anything. Like, remember Cats ran on fucking Broadway? That was just some motherfuckers in some fake fursuits jumping around. People loved it. So you can get away with murder on Broadway and shit. But in the movies, that's true, man. That's true. Yeah, but the movies, you gotta come with something a little bit better. So they kind of made fun of it. They kind of made it corny, and like basically what they did was like when the characters are feeling a certain emotion, they pick out a cock rock song from the '80s to sing out and shit. And like I just like a lot of that music and shit. Like fuck, sorry if I'm a mullet wearing motherfucker, but I like some of that music. And, like, yeah, the Julianne Huff girl, she was, like, a little corny and shit from Dancing with the Stars. She wasn't a good actress. She didn't really pull it off too well. But it, I hate Russell Brand. Even he was kind of good in it. Alec Baldwin was singing some cock rock with some wig on. But I got to give him credit, man. And this is a motherfucker that we will rip time and time again. But Tom Cruise was awesome in this movie. It's Stacey Jacks. He was kind of, like, the big main cock rock star, man. And, and, like, he had a monkey, a, not even a monkey, a fucking baboon. It was a baboon called Hey Man. And the baboon <laughs> would, like, run and get him, like, a bottle of Jack Daniels and shit. And he was always fucking girls. And Malin Ackerman was a Rolling Stone reporter that he fucked and got pregnant and shit. Like, it just, I don't know, man. It just was fucking cool to me. Like, I know people are laughing at me. But, like, here's the thing, man. Like, I was sitting in the third row. I was real close to the screen. The music was loud. I was in the theater real early on a Saturday morning throwing some popcorn in my fucking throat and shit. And, like, the place was rocking and fucking, like, it, the movie has so much exuberance. Like, it probably won't be the same when you watch the shit on DVD and, like, a little TV and shit. But, like, in the theater, it was, like, a rock concert and shit. And I was, like, there were some boring parts and shit that I didn't like. Like, there was a part where the part of the movie I really didn't like was, like, when Russell Brand and Alec Baldwin, like, turn gay and start making out and shit. And they start. What? Yeah, like, I don't, oh I don't know where. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, no, dude, like, like the, the story, the story is, like, Alec Baldwin runs, like, this, like, the main story is, like, Alec Baldwin is this fucking, like, fake whiskey go-go. Which is where all the up and coming acts play and shit, and and Tom Cruise like, but the club is in trouble and shit. And Tom Cruise like got his start there, but he's a huge rock star now, so he's gonna come back and play a show. But anyway, like all of a sudden, I don't know where Russell Brand, and Alec Baldwin, and the, and like you gotta understand, man, like just Alec Baldwin is the boss, and like he's telling some bartenders to do some shit and shit. And then Russell Brand is like the general manager, like booking the bands and shit. And like they just seem like some good friends, some co-workers, like do some coke together, drink some booze, fuck some girls together. And just out of and then like this is why I didn't like it, man. It's like out of nowhere, fucking like they just turn to each other. 
and they start singing, I can't fight this feeling anymore, and they start making out, and fucking Alec Baldwin fucking bends Russell Brand over a chair, and like pulls his pants down, starts taking him up the old fucking it's highway PG-13 and shit. Movie. They yeah, that shit. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I mean, but that's the only bad scene in the whole movie, like, there's a lot of hot girls showing their fucking legs and shit. <laughs> And by the way, America, disclaimer, like, we, we ain't fucking no homophobes. I know God ain't. I'm not a homophobe. I don't but, give a shit, but, man. But, 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 but I kind of know what you're saying. Like, it it, 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 it came out of, it was some gay shit just to yeah, have yeah. some gay shit. I mean, like, it, it, it's, it's like gay the bad way. I mean, like. like well, like, well, well, like, okay, my problem, yeah, gay the bad way. Because, like, my problem was if, if they would have played the story, like, like the movie starts out, you know these guys are gay, but they're not together, and then like they they start feeling like some love feelings for each other. Okay, like whatever. But just to come out of nowhere, like some characters that you think are straight and getting some pussy, and next thing you know, they just want to be blowing each other. Like it just was some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, man. Like 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 me and go. And, and, no, again, disclaimer. Like like that's not the kind of shit that we see in the theater that we walk out and we're like, oh my god, I gotta take a cold shower. Yeah, I don't it's give the kind a shit. of thing that we see. And we're like, that just isn't that does that don't make sense. It, it, you know, there, there's 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 no yeah. reason for this, the movie. It's it's just it, it's gay to be gay. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, there's no book for it. So I, you know, I, but but the, yeah, but the ahead. rest of it, like Tom Cruise plays an awesome role, man. He's banging all these fucking girls and he's singing all these Def Leppard songs and Dude, shit. Hello, he, I'm the hey, fucking Tom Cruise, man. I'm a fucking yeah. He's a badass. He, he he's not afraid to fucking turn down any fucking role. You know, you know, like everybody rags on Scientology. You know, the good thing about Scientology is like, like you can do any role in movies. You don't have to be like yeah. gay ass Stephen Baldwin. If you're a yeah. Christian, if you're, you're a Christian, like, like you can't do certain roles. Like you can't fuck a girl. If you're a Scientologist, yeah. at the very least, you can fuck a girl in a movie and show right. her tits and everything. Right, right. So no, I, I'm with you, goat. I mean, like. Yeah, th- this is a controversial choice, and I'm not, I'm not saying I wouldn't like the movie. I don't think I'd pick it as my favorite of 2012. But hey, man, you know what? Maybe it's gonna get a bunch of people to watch it. And like you said, the fucking music is fucking boss, man. That's that's, that's what I'm music. saying. Like like if you don't like some cock rock music and you think it's yes, gonna be that- corny, like like fine, stay away. But if like you just show up to the theater or you're sitting in your house, and you got your speakers turned up and shit, and you're drinking some beers and you're fuck and like you know the songs, you're singing along and shit. It's a it's a fun like like a hundred percent to put this in context, Phil D's, a hundred percent this is like the modern Rocky Horror picture show. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I, I swear to God, I, I was I was gonna mention that. I was gonna say once in a while, once a generation, you get a musical that everybody fucking likes and no one's afraid of them if they like it. Case in point, like you said, Rocky Horror. Grease is another example. Now, right. and, and and there's been, there's been a few that came out recently, like Moulin Rouge and Chicago. That like you know, most people would say, no, I, you know, I, I don't. It's musical. It's not for me. But you know, th- this sounds like the one that kind of breaks the mold. And this is this is the one for this generation. I mean, it, it's it sounds like it works. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's yeah. our music. It's, it's, it's really, and, and not only that, but it, it's about the '80s. It's about cock rock. Like it ain't. Yeah. And it like like Les Miserables. Like fucking Hugh Jackman is going to look in the camera and sing all serious about some Holocaust and bullshit. Like it ain't like that. It's it's Tom yeah. Cruise saying I fuck a lot of girls and I'm going to fuck this girl and then after that I'm going to fuck another girl and I got a monkey jumping around get me drinks. Like yeah, I mean, it, like it, like it, how are you going to hate that? You know what I mean? No, no, I mean. It, it, it kind of sounds like he's reprising his role for Magnolia, first of all. Yeah, he and, is. And, and even though it's PG-13, he's still fucking drinking. There's a fucking monkey. I mean, it, you know what? I think it sounds like a serviceable fucking musical. Yeah. I'm not just saying that because I disagree with the fucking goat a lot, America. I, I, I ain't on his nuts, and you know we'll get into that later because I already know. I kind of have a feeling of what's on his list and shit. But, but you know, I, I give him credit. I... I, I I'll fucking see it. I think you guys should see it too. You know, make make up your mind. You know, with fucking shit. Hey, but. okay, this is what you do, man. You got that fucking that single mom, couple doors down from your apartment complex and shit. Like she ain't the best looking, whatever. But you know she was wild in the '80s. Invite her down, fucking split a gym, bottle of Jim Beam, turn on Rock of Ages, we have a good time, cock rocking. Next thing you know, them panties be dropping. There you go. Hey man, true, true fucking story, man. Back in the day, I, I actually got into some uh, 
I actually actually pulled the wool with a girl by having her over and watching fucking my big fat Greek wedding. So I don't think this is going to be any different. So if yeah. anything, if anything, guys, get the movie just to get yeah, some. Yeah, I mean, that, oh. Fucking find that shit in the $5 bargain bin at Walmart. I don't care if you get the DVD or the 8-track or whatever. Like, throw that shit in. He's like, like you'll be pulling some single fucking mom wool in no time. If there is nothing sleazier, sexier, dirtier than a fucking woman raised in the 80s who still listens to Def Lap and fucking We Built This City. And exactly. If she's, she's into that music. She's going to be into the old britches. So I'm just saying, you know, the, the, you know, I mean, fuck, dude, the, the goat's got a good point. It's like fucking dating 101. <laughs> exactly. Like, like, do, too late, man. do you want to fucking have a DVD copy of Rock of Ages and be drowning in a pussy? Or do you want to be a fucking film snob on nerd on fake and Facebook, like jerking off into the lefty fucking Rosie Palm and her five sisters? Like, come on, wake up, motherfuckers. Are, are, are you going to fucking watch Cloud Atlas alone with glasses on and a bottle? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be all intellectual and shit? Or are you going to fucking get that pussy? Come are on, you, man. you going to try to get fucking actual laid. Exactly. Watch Rock of Ages. I mean, it's a no-brainer. And, but uh, I'll, go ahead and, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you one of mine right now. Uh, yeah, let I'm me hear still... that shit. All right, man. Well, I, I, got, I got Jeff who lives at home, which was um, fucking uh, Ed Helms and uh, fucking Jason Siegel. This is uh, made by the same guys who fucking made Cyrus, John C. Riley. We were talking about him earlier. This is a pretty good movie. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure the fucking goat saw it. If he didn't, go fucking watch it, man. Nice little independent movie. I mean, the fucking title says it all. The fucking Jeff lives at home with his mom. And his uh, older brother, Patrick, uh, fucking, he married or about to get married. He's fucking works as a car salesman or whatever. It's you know I'm I'm not I'm not gonna get into it I'm really not but it's it's just it's just a nice little just a good comedy. time comedy I, yeah I actually have not seen it it was playing at a theater like a couple towns away I was going to go see it and just like I was seeing a bunch of movies at the time it got pushed out but I I'll give this shit a rent on fucking Blu-ray I don't give a shit yeah man I mean I, I mean I'm I'm basically plugging the shit because I'm I'm not, I'm not gonna get into it it's an independent funny fucking comedy and it's not laugh out loud this the same fucking like that's my boy type humor. It's just it's just a sweet endearing movie, but it's just so fucking original and hardcore, man. I mean, you know, I really enjoy seeing fucking guys that you would think are sellouts like Ed Helms, and seeing him do something really hardcore and really just fucking unusual, you know. And it's really good, you know. And, and Jason Siegel's the same way. Everybody knows him as the fucking guy on fucking How I Met Your Mother, but dude, the guy. Well, okay, like, like maybe I don't know because I haven't seen the movie and shit, but, like, I would say a nice comparable movie that this kind of remind me of is, like, maybe it could be, like, The Tale of Steve, if you remember that movie with Donald Logue. Like, maybe it's just a good movie about a fucking guy who's kind of a loser, but he has a good, interesting story that, you know what I mean, about his life and shit. Right, right. and, and, and that, that was also touted as a fucking comedy. It wasn't laugh out loud, but you watch it, I would say it's more like a lighthearted movie. But like, not like a lighthearted movie with a fucking message to fucking cry with your fucking girlfriends with. You know what I mean? It's just a yeah. fucking lighthearted, interesting R-rated movie. And yeah, it, and I love it because it is R-rated. This is you know this is this is how people talk and how people laugh. There's drinking, there's fucking cussing, there's fighting. It's a great fucking film. So uh, I had the pleasure of red boxing that shit, watched it. And uh, it's got my stamp for best of 2012. I fucking love it. And I can't. I can't wait you, for the you, fucking. You goals. you saw that shit for 120 pennies plus tax, and you love the fuck out of it. So what more do you got to know? You know what I mean? Exactly, man. And I, you know, I know you're gonna like it. And fucking America, you like our show. You like our shit. I I really do not believe that anyone would not like this movie. It's it's just it's 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 awesome. Susan Sarandon, hot as fuck. Uh, As she was in That's My Boy. I love that Susan Sarandon played. By the way, did you know that in That's My Boy, Susan Sarandon played the older whatever? It was actually her daughter played the younger version that fucked the Seriously? little kid. Yeah, the fucked the little kid version wow. of Adam Sandler. I know that. Wow, that's that's some good movie trivia for you out there, America. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. What? <laughs> and, and I mean, who who plays a better fucking MILF than Susan fucking Sarandon, right? 
hot as fucking broad. I tell, fucking... you, I, I tell you, I tell you, like, uh, like if you see her in her prime and Rocky Horror Picture Show, and by the way, like Rocky Horror Picture Show will be brought up a lot on this show because we love it, man. But like, but like, if you saw her in her prime, man, Susan Serena is one of the best piece of ass ever. But even as an old sixty year old woman, she, I, she's still a good looking woman, man. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I, I would fucking hit that shit. I, I I would be a giver with that. I mean, she just seems so fucking sensual and hot. I don't want to turn this into a fucking porno or anything like that. But man, she's a classy you, woman. Like you just can't you just can't throw her a a, a deuce deuce a Colt forty five and shit. You got to take her to like the Sizzler and then take her home to fuck her. But it's <laughs> it, it's worth it, man. It's let me put it that way. It's worth it to fucking spend about you know twenty seven dollars at Sizzler to get a piece of nice. Classy ass like Susan Sarandon. Just ass. No man, I mean like you're right. Like like she's kind of slutty, but she ain't gonna just fuck any dick that comes along. And she's not that high maintenance that you have to fucking take her to fucking Beverly Hills. Or whatever. Yeah, you don't even have to marry her. Fucking Tim Robbins, no, like no, they no, don't. No. She don't even believe in marriage. She you just fuck her for twenty years and call it a she day and do whatever. Do, yeah. So, so, sorry, sorry, Shawshank Redemption. Moving on, moving on to some younger dick. But anyway, I, th- I think we're digressing at this point. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. Let's let's so, keep let's so, keep so, the so, ball yeah. rolling. So uh, these these motherfuckers, their work day ain't that long when they listen to this podcast. We gotta keep rolling. No, but you know what? This is perfect for those people who fucking work where they uh, do data entry and shit, and they can just fucking pop on the headphones. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel sorry for them types of motherfuckers. I personally don't know anybody like that. But we're you know we don't intend the show to be this long traditionally, but we're we're breaking down a lot of all the movies of 2012 right here, so it's going to take a little. I mean, bit. yeah, I mean, hey, hey, you know, I apologize. This is our first podcast. We're drunk as fuck. If it's too long, fucking press pause and listen to it tomorrow. Yeah, come like, back the next day or some shit. Thing. No, no, no skin off our back. But I, I think we're ready for the goats next entry for best of 2012. Yeah, I'm coming up on number three. And this is like probably people because this is a movie that made money, but wasn't really like people weren't blowing each other for. But number three, I got the Amazing Spider-Man, directed by Mark Webb and starring Andrew Garfield and shit. And I got to like like full disclosure, I love Spider-Man. He was my hero when I was a kid and shit. And it was always my dream to see a Spider-Man movie for many years. Fucking James Cameron was going to do one, and he dropped out. And fucking. You know, then Sam Raimi did his shit, and I'm sorry, man. Like, if you like the Sam Raimi movies, fine, whatever. But I didn't like them. I didn't like the fact that Spider-Man shot jism out of his wrist and shit. Getting back to the basics they did with this amazing Spider-Man. Like, I'm not going to bullshit until it was the best movie ever made and shit. But at least they finally made a Spider-Man movie that was a, a real movie. Like, it had some emotion. It had some heart. People say, oh, it was trying to be a dark Twilight and shit because it had a romance. Okay, first of all... Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy was a couple in the comic book back in the 60s. So Twilight, when Twilight was a fucking sperm cell swimming around in the balls of Stephanie Meyer, fucking Spider-Man had already been dating Gwen Stacy and shit. All right, so don't don't even say that shit right there. And like, and who cares? Who gives a fuck? Twilight, Twilight, whatever. All you hate it. It threatens your masculinity, whatever. Who cares? Twilight is out there. It's over. It's done. Spider-Man is going to continue on as a franchise, so they're going to keep going. I like what they did here. It was not a perfect movie. It still kind of had a dumbness to it that a lot of big budget movies had. But at least they had the balls to like have like a lizard run around a high school and people all panicked, run out the fucking doors, jumping out windows and shit because a lizard man crawled up out of the toilet and was killing motherfuckers. And then Spider-Man had to jump in the bathroom and chain into a Spider-Man costume and shoot some webs on the motherfucker. It was some good, like, there's a lot of comic book bullshit out there, but I don't think a lot of it's really well done. I think this was pretty well done. It was a pretty good time at the movies. Laid a nice foundation for the franchise. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Spider-Man 2. I'm ready to leave the Sam Raimi bullshit behind, and I'm just, you know, I'm ready to roll with it. That's just my take on it. Nice, nice assessment, man. Um, I, I think it was not the best movie. I don't think it was the best comic book movie, but I think it was the best Spider-Man movie. I yes, really so yes. I, I, I'll give you that. And I know I know you're a little biased. You're a Spider-Man fan. So I'm not going to downplay that. And that, that, that that's a perfectly acceptable choice for best of 2012. Uh, I, I, can't, I can't disagree with what you said. And I want to add, I mean, like, you know, 
they really fucking went out of their way to make it like a real movie. I mean, you got Martin Sheen, you got a fucking Mary Tyler Moore. I mean, it you was, got C. <laughs> Thomas Howe. Yes, you, you got you got Dennis Leary. Yeah, I mean, Dennis Leary was... came. And listen, man, Dennis Leary made so much money off of that fucking Fireman show on FX. He don't have to do right, shit. Yeah, yeah, he did. But he, but he but, but they showed him the script, and he he was like, "I'll act this bullshit out. Like it's cool." You know what I mean? Yeah, he's he's like he's like I don't have to do anything the rest of my fucking life because I'm fucking rich, bitches. But I'll do this. Why not? Sure, it's New York. I like it. It's fun. And uh, fucking Gwen Stacy. What, that, what is her em, name? Emma Stone. Yeah, she. Okay. I, I, okay. Everybody what? says she's a redhead, and this is what's funny about the Spider-Man world is back in the Sam Raimi movies, they never had Gwen Stacy, but they took a blonde and Kirsten Dunst, and they dyed her hair red to play a redhead. Okay, Gwen Stacy, like fucking is blonde. They took a redhead, fucking had her hair go fucking blonde. Play like I don't know. It's just a funny trivia, or whatever. It, 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 it's 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 ironic. It's the same. But what I was gonna say is like I'm not a fan of hers. Like I don't dislike her. I'm just not a fan. And I don't think she's that fucking hot. But yeah, I'm she's so- a little freckle faced girl. Like I'm not all about her. She does a lot of PG thirteen bullshit that I could give a fuck about. Right. Right, yeah. I mean, she, I mean, you know, her her big role is the fucking help. But when I saw her in this movie, man, like I, I gotta admit, I was fucking into her, dude. I th- I thought she was hot. She she pulled off I, the blonde y- little y- nerdy y- slut. I yeah, love that. Yes, movie. dude. Like, yeah, you know what? Like, they've been hyping this girl for a good five years now, and I never bought into this shit. I was kind of like, whatever. And finally, I'm just like, I get it now. Like, I get why she's worthy to be in a movie and be the main girl and shit so she really like i haven't seen the help my my fucking dad saw it daddy go saw it. he said it's actually a really good movie i still it's just one of the ones i gotta get around to seeing because everybody says it's good so like but she was good in zombie land but that was kind of like just a zombie movie whatever that would have been good no matter who exactly you could have a porn star playing the role and it still would have been a good movie and shit your sister could have played that fucking role exactly and i don't even have a sister so that tells you something right there (laughs) All right, I'm moving along on the list. Okay, number two, my favorite, 2012, whatever. We got Spendables 2, Back for War. Some places call the movie Expendables 2. Some places call it Expendables 2, Back for War. Either way, Expendables 2 is on there, man. I am just a big fucking fan of 80s action. I love fucking Sylvester Stallone. I love fucking Dolph Lundgren, and I really love fucking Jean-Claude Van Damme, and he came back to the big screen. This is the first big screen movie i was able to see john claude van damme in since universal soldier the return which is a big steaming pile of shit so even if this is the last big movie that comes out at least van damme came in he stole the show he fucking said some shit like the god is a pet of satan ah. like at least he came back with some memorable shit he had a good fight with stallone at the end i love expendables too i saw it three times Saw it in the first run theater i saw it at the driving i saw it at the cheap theater on the last day the last showing I didn't even want Expendables 2 to go away. I, I know I can go get the Blu-ray and shit, but I just love going to see that shit on a big screen. Expendables 2. What do you say, Phil Dees? Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> that was actually on my list, too, man. I, I, fucking, I didn't get a chance to see it in the theater. I wanted to. Uh, Phil and the GOAT saw the first one in the theater together. Thought yeah, we, we did. Little, yeah, I thought we were going to have a little reunion. didn't work out so good. Fucking GOAT saw it fucking 40,000 times. I fucking I was able to get that shit on... Um, I was able to actually red box that shit. And uh, it's, you know what? I, I fucking love it. H- how can you not love it, man? I mean, you know what? Even, even, even the fucking movie critics who are not like the fucking snobby, staunchy ones, they know what it is. It's, there's no pretense about it. It's fucking blowing shit up. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of people say that Expendables 2 is a better movie than Expendables. And like, cause it's just more fun and shit, which I get what they're saying, but like, I really like the Expendables a lot. I like the Stallone directed this one time. Simon West, a different director, came in and directed it. I like Stallone's version on Expendables one, cause he put Mickey Rourke in there and he had a yeah, fucking, yeah. you know, he he had more heart and emotion. And this one was more like fun with Van Damme and Chuck Norris popping up and whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, but, you, and, and, dude, that, that fucking Chuck Norris cameo, that fake cameo, that was a, that, that was the so, serious thing you've ever seen in my life. But, like, so okay. Like, 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 people make fun of like Bruce Willis and Arnold and Stallone because they're in their sixties and shit. Like, okay, whatever. But at least they still kind of seem believable in the shit. Fucking Chuck Norris looked like a motherfucker should have been in a wheelchair and shit. <laughs> like, he just 
Dude, I mean, I don't, I don't think he even wanted to do it. It was, it was, it was like a favorite times three. I, I think he was. Well, like, I mean, let's be honest too, man. Like Chuck Norris was like Chuck Norris got his whatever start from being the white man who did karate in the 1970s at a time when all the kung fu flicks were asian guys like bruce lee and shit and then kind of like white motherfuckers could be like oh we got chuck norris and shit so like i like stallone and schwarzenegger and even van damme and shit like they they made their own way you know what i mean and and i don't know like like i don't think people will really be writing us in that hillbilly dvd reviews at gmail.com to tell us we're wrong on this one like no no but the thing is you're right because like norris is the only fucking one from the 80s that fucking sold out and did a goddamn tv show well not in that but i don't know man like there was rumors that expendables 2 had to be pg-13 because he was so christian and shit and like i'm sorry like don't do an r-rated movie and then want the rating to be fucked up and shit just because you have some weird religious beliefs or whatever. Yeah, well, 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 thankfully, Stallone was a producer and I, I, I have a feeling that he wrote most of the fucking script. I, I, gar- I guarantee that he did most of the writing. He And and as a producer, you know, just because you're billed as a director don't mean that you're going to, whatever you want to shoot flies. I mean, exactly. I, 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 th- I think I, I think Stallone took a backseat, but I think he was a backseat driver. I think it was a serviceable sequel, it was, you know, a new story. It, it wasn't one of the sequels that's, like, bigger and bolder. It was just a different story. And I fucking yeah, it, liked it, it, man. It gave uh, him, like, some more chances to fight some new fuckers and shit. Yeah. But, like, we, we, we got to move on. You gotta, yeah, how keep, many more you got on your best list, dude? I have one more. How many do you have? I got one more, too, actually. All right. Like, go, go ahead and let, let's reel off your number one pick or whatever. All right, man. All right. Now, this is going to come as a shock to people, not because it's my favorite, but I think I – well, I'm not going to – no spoiler alert, but we, we have the worst stuff to come from both of us. But my last favorite movie was actually the fucking Avengers. I fucking love that shit. I love superhero movies that work. I love seeing team superhero movies. Uh, I like that this wasn't fucking the X-Men where they were just weren't fucking wearing leather jackets and making jokes about spandex and shit. Uh, I, I, I didn't mind the humor. I fucking loved it. Might not have been the most original storyline in the world, but I fucking love Chris Hemsworth as fucking Thor and fucking Captain America, whoever the fuck that is. Uh, I think Mark Ruffalo did a good job stepping up to Hulk, replacing Edward Norton. Uh, you know what? I, I just I, I love me a good old fashioned fucking superhero movie, and I, I think that I think they did it up right. I saw that shit twice. I fucking love it, man. I watch it again. I know the plot. I know the story, but you know what? Uh, only bad thing about that was fucking Hawkeye, and and not because I don't like Jen- Jeremy Renner, but because they gave him the worst fucking costume and the worst fucking personality. I mean, he was such such a fucking throwaway character. But yeah, my last best of is definitely Avengers and. That's my story. I'm fucking sticking to it. All right. I'm going to pull a no comment on here and it's, like let the backstabbing begin in a second. But we'll just Avengers. We'll just keep moving. I got one more on my top favorite. And my top favorite of the movie is actually from the director of the Avengers. This motherfucker was so successful. He had two movies come out in the same year. He didn't direct this other one, but he was a producer on it and shit. Cabin in the Woods. I loved it, man. Fucking Joss Whedon fucking did something good from the Buffy days. He teamed up with one of the Buffy writers. And they made a fucking awesome movie about some fuckers going in Cabin in the Woods. And fucking some monsters jumped out. And then when you thought the movie was over, some more j- monsters jumped out. And then, like, so you, okay, like, it's over now. And then some more monsters jumped out. There was monsters running around in this shit. It was, like, fucking monster party, mad monster mash shit. They did the monster mash and shit. I loved it. There was blood spraying all over the walls and shit. You know, I mean, yeah, it had some clever humor or whatever. But I'll be honest with you, I don't even give a fuck about that clever humor. I just want monsters eating people and killing people and whatever. Mer- Merman. Merman fucking shot, the, fucking Merman ate some motherfucker and he blew a fucking wad of fucking blood all over the wall and shit. So Cabin in the Woods, I know a lot of people are like, oh, we can't talk about it because there's a big twist and shit. Like whatever, man. They they expose the twist in the first ten minutes in the movie. Who gives a shit? But Cabin in the Woods, like I said, I'm not saying it's the best movie of the year, but I was in the theater having a good time and then like. You know, it didn't sell out at the end. It still went dark and cynical at the end. Played an awesome, one of my favorite Nine Inch Nails songs at the end off of 
broken and shit. So I loved it, man. Like I can't, I can't get enough of it. I got the fucking DVD Blu-ray combo and shit. I'm gonna watch that shit again soon. Cabin in the Woods. That was my favorite because it just took me by surprise. It was delayed. It was sitting on the shelf for three years. I don't give a fuck. It still was good to me. Yeah, man. Uh, it, it, it's not on my best list. It's not on my worst list, and I can't disagree with what the go fucking said. So. You know, check it out, man. Good, good, good original horror movie. All right, man. So we out of our uh, fucking best. I think it's time to start talking about our. Let's worst. talk about the worst. I'm flipping my little card over, and now I got the least favorite to top. Yeah, man. This, this is going to be even more entertaining, I guarantee. So, yeah, this uh, is where the controversy is really going to rise. You only have five on your least favorite, but I have ten. Yeah, so. well, I got five because I don't see as many movies as go, man. But, right, right. Uh, so I. So let's yeah. let's burn some of, through some of mine real quick, and then yeah, we'll jump on yours. All right, number ten, I have the Born Part Four, aka the Born Legacy. Jeremy Brenner jumping in, trying to do some Matt Damon shit. I did not like the Born movies at all very much. Parts two and three were very shaky and handheld and bullshitty. The worst part was like I did like the first part with Frank Patente and with Doug Liman directing, but then Greengrass took over and shook the camera around, and made some bullshit. And I hate to say that part four really followed in the footsteps. There was some good action scenes. I like the part where Jeremy Renner was on a motorcycle and shit at the end. But this movie was fucking idiotic dumb, man. Like, the whole movie, he's running around <laughs> with Rachel Weisz, who, like, she's a good-looking woman and stuff. But the whole movie, she's, he's like, you're a doctor, right? Like, I need these steroids to survive because I'm a born fucker. I'm not the born fucker, but I'm a born fucker. And I need these steroids. I need blues and greens to survive. Give me these steroids. And she's like, well, like, you don't need the green steroid anymore, so I just got to give you the blue steroid. He's like, well, maybe if we can go to Hong Kong, you can shoot a virus into my dick, and then I won't need these steroids anymore. Whole fucking thing was like a Mark McGuire chase for some steroids. Dumb shit. Only two good action scenes in a two-plus-hour movie. I'm sorry. It was some stinky bullshit. All right, what else, man? What else? All right, number nine on least favorite, and this is because I wanted to see this movie when it came out, but it was a limited release movie, so, of course, my Hillbilly Theaters would not get it. I had to wait till DVD. I waited, like, this movie came out in January. I saw this shit in August or September. I waited all year. I couldn't wait to see it. It was fucking William Shakespeare bullshit called Coriolanus or Coriolanus, fucking starring Ray Fiennes, Gerard Butler, directed by Ray Fiennes, and the preview made it look awesome, like they was in this war zone and blowing fuckers up and a badass enemy, and then you just see the movie and like, yeah, they show, they spoke the corny Shakespeare accent and all that shit, but the movie was boring as fuck, it had a, like a little tiny like action scene at the beginning, and then it got boring and unbelievable and... I don't know, man. At the end, fucking Ray Fiennes and fucking Jar Butler joined forces, but it just didn't mean shit. Like, it just was... It was about a warrior who was, like, the warrior for an evil state, you know what I mean? And then he got his ass kicked and got thrown in jail, and then he came out and became a rebel warrior. But it was some boring, stinky shit with no action scenes. Fuck Coralinus, and that's all I gotta say on that shit. Sounds horrible, man. I... <laughs> I haven't seen it. Don't want to see it. It's bo- don't. It, it's so fucking boring, dude. And like, I'm not against Shakespeare shit just because it's old shit. Like some people are like, "Fuck Shakespeare, he's dead." I, like, if Shakespeare's got some good stories or whatever, but this movie is so poorly paced and like, no, 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 you know no, what no, I mean? I, I hear you, dude. Fucking uh, Ethan Hawke and fucking Kyle MacLachlan. Did a fucking modern age Hamlet came out a couple Yeah, where he's ago. just like riding around in cars. Like, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? That worked. So like, like you said, like, like Shakespeare, it, it works sometimes. It don't always work. Just just because it says Shakespeare, don't mean it's gonna work. It exactly. sometimes does, but fucking don't make dog shit and just say, hey, it's Shakespeare, so it's gonna fucking work. You know. So. Yeah. What what else you got, dog? Number eight, I got Snow White and the Huntsman fucking... You sell that shit? I, I saw, not only did I sell that shit, but I was a dumb motherfucker, and I saw it when it was, like, out for six weeks. I could, I, like, and I, like, I could have seen it at the cheap theater, like, one week later for a dollar, but I got paid, like, seven bucks to see it. And, I can't like, believe you paid for that shit, man. Uh, okay, here, okay, here's the story on it, just, man. Just, like, justify it, goat. The first trailer I thought looked cool. Like, it was when I saw the movie Young Adult with Charlie Theron, which was awesome. And I was, like, finally back in Charlie Theron's side. And she looked like the evil whatever. And she raised up out of the milk and shit and looked like a demon and shit. I was like, this is, like this looks pretty badass. 
and I was seduced by the trailer, and then I went to see it, and it was Kirsten Stewart fucking doing her same boring buck tooth bullshit, and then Thor was playing the fucking drunken huntsman, and this movie was so slow, like, it was made for teenagers, but it was so dumb and so slow, and nothing happened, and then there was some little troll fuckers in it, like Snow White and the Seven Drawers, so these little troll fuckers, and what they did was... I don't know, man. Like, I guess they didn't want to hire no, like, little dwarf people or whatever. Yeah. So they had these little dwarf bodies, but then they had real actors on it. Like, they had Toby Jones and, like, Ian McShane and fucking, what's his name? Nick Frost from the Simon Pegg movies and shit. And, like. Oh, no shit. He was in that? Yeah. I and, like. That dude, man, that, that, that fat fucking English man. He's yeah, but, man. like, they had his big fat head on a little tiny dwarf body and shit, man. Like, that was um, the only that was the only good part about it. And just it, it was just trying to be too PG-12 and, like, whatever. And then, of course, Kirsten Stewart fucks everything up by going and fucking the director who's married with children and shit. I was going to mention that, too. What a fucking whore she She's is. nasty, whore. man. Like, she doesn't even look that hot in movies. And then you see her in real life, and she's always, like, out there in her panties and stringy dirty hair she ain't watched for three days so yeah, yeah. i mean i mean like you, you know what's funny like i mean you fucking watch our fucking channel and we we comment on how unattractive she is but but she's perfect for the role of twilight because she's like an average looking chick but like she's such a fucking slut man like she's a slob man like she looks like she's she- She's a sloppy, slop, sl- sloppy, sloppy, slop, man. She She's looks like she sits around all day shooting heroin and has tears coming out of her eyes and shit. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, it's like if she doesn't have dick in her mouth, she gets thirsty and shit. You yeah, know I mean? like, I mean, it's just time to let her go. Quit pushing her as, like, a modern, like, starring actor. You yeah, know what I mean? I know, man. She she puts Kirsten Dunst to shame. I mean, she fucking, she's, she's such a fucking hoe. I mean... She's going on with her fucking star of fucking Twilight. She's got to fucking bang this married director. How yeah. fucking cock hungry are you? Good lord. Yeah, I, like in the, the that guy Robert Pattinson, the guy's a good actor, and plus he starred in Twilight, so you know he could get all kinds of pussy. And then he's banging that little bag of bones called Kristen Stewart. Like I don't know. Oh, shit, so, man, I mean, he, he, he's loyal to her, and she fucking and she's, shit about and she's, she's fucking <laughs> anything that moves. Like I don't know, man. Like he should have his fucking head examined. I think like. So number seven, I'm gonna keep moving on my least favorite movies of the year. Number seven, I got the fucking Hunger Games right here. A worldwide phenomenon of bullshit. I hate the Hunger Games movie, man. It sucks. And the thing is, is I like Jennifer Lawrence, man. She's a good she's only like twenty two years old. She's a really good young actress, like really comes through on her roles, seems like but like She's like a pretty, like, uh, blonde hair girl. They dyed her hair all nasty. Like, they got, like, an old bottle of Steven Seagal's fucking hair dye and dyed her hair all nasty. They threw dirt on her face to make her look like she'd been laying in the mud forever. And then, like, I'm sorry, but I know they want to claim, like, oh, it's not a ripoff, but this is a Battle Royale ripoff, man. Battle Royale was an awesome Japanese movie about school kids killing each other in a yeah, fucking yeah. evil tournament or whatever. No oh, man, you're right. I I actually fucking read about this shit, man, and uh, they they called her out on it. And uh, the fucking author of the book was like, "Man, I never saw that movie. I never read it. This is my idea." I mean, you know, who's to say she's right or wrong? Give her a lie detector test, but yeah, that's it's, it's a oh, fuck fucking it. oh, like fuck. there's even the same shit. Like while the competition is going on, there's announcements over the speakers about who died. And it's a carbon copy bullshit. And like they thought they was gonna make it different by having some authority figures dressing up in some fucking cotton candy, blue haired shit. Who ca- who ca- that didn't have any effect on the story, whatever. This is a rip off. It's poorly done. It's very PG thirteen y. Like the action's not even good. And Jennifer Lawrence, who is like normally like a good actress that you can bring a lot of emotion out of, even she seemed bored fucking by this shit. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Number six on my list, the least favorite. I'm going to go with Safe House starring Denzel Washington oh, and Ryan R- Yeah, man. Like, I don't know. Like, you, you might disagree, but, like, I just, like, okay, the movie starts out. Denzel Washington shoves a USB thumb drive, like, up his ass. And then everybody's, like, running around, like, oh, there's these top secrets out. Like, where did he hide the information? The whole movie is jammed to his fucking thigh up in his ass and shit. So Denzel Washington, he gets tortured and shit. And then some fucking not even terrorists just like some street bums come in with some ak-47s try to kill him he gets away with ryan reynolds it's like they really should have called this handcuff the movie because that's all that happens Denzel, (laughs) denzel washington gets handcuffed over and over and over and like 
it's a boring movie, and normally it wouldn't make it on my least favorite, but they shot it all handheld and shaky, trying to rip off the boring movies, and it just, I was like, I haven't seen a movie all year long like this unoriginal. It just, I don't know, man. It just, even the action didn't do it for me. Yeah, man. I, you know, sorry I hated that. Let's Mo- fucking move on. What, moving what, on. <laughs> now, you got five on your least favorite. Why don't you do one of your least favorite now? All right, man. I'll do one. Um, I'm actually picking The Grey. With Liam Neeson and a whole bunch of fucking wolves. And the reason I picked this is because, to me, this was like fucking Saving Private Ryan in the fucking <laughs> cold Alaskan fucking whatever. It, 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 was, it, was, it was just too predictable. Like, I, I'm, I'm not anti-Liam Neeson. I'm not anti-wolf. I'm not fucking anti-fucking man versus nature. Like, this movie was just too fucking predictable. Like, every every man had a story. They gave their fucking monologue about you know why they're here, what they're doing, and then they fucking die. And it it, it was just too it was too by the numbers, and I didn't care how it ended or how brutal it was. But man, it fucking disappointed me, man. I really did. I I had so much hope for this. I mean, this is fucking Liam Neeson, man. This is fucking Taken. You know what I mean? This is my. Oh yeah, not only that, but Liam Neeson has a background twenty five years as a serious actor. Like when he jumps into a movie, you think it's going to be some good shit, and uh, I I don't know, man. He just. He's kind of, I've not seen The Grey, but just judging his recent career, man, he's just kind of doing whatever's take, you know, offered man, you, to him and you shit. You haven't seen The Grey, dude? All right, well, I have listen, not seen The Grey. Well, let me sway you. It was saving Private Ryan, dude. Fucking the plane crashes. Half of them survive. Half of them die. They go fucking try to survive the wilderness. And, you know, every motherfucker has a little mind like, oh, well, no, this was my life. I, I was yeah, I hate you. movies like that. And, and, then, and then guess what? He's, he's the next one to die. The, the, the next, fucker who opens up next and tells his life story is going to die in the next scene after I that. Mean, I mean, it sounds so fucking in, like, by the book, but that's exactly what it fucking was, Go. Yeah, let's jump back to my list on the least favorite. And I know some, like, some science fiction fans are going to get mad at me with this shit. But number five, least favorite, fucking Prometheus. Holy shit, what a mess, man. Fucking, they start out the movie when they're making it, oh, it's a prequel to Alien. They're like, oh, it's not a prequel to Alien. And all you nerdy motherfuckers are going to say, like, well, you just didn't like it because it didn't have enough aliens in it for you. And you, you know, you're just an alien fan who didn't get what you wanted. No, nah, man, like, the reason I didn't like this movie, it was so choppy, it was so shitty. And everybody was, like, stroking their fucking chin beard saying it's very intellectual. It was not intellectual at all. It was probably one of the dumbest movies I've seen all year long. Like, the the the, the second scene in the movie... They walk into a cave, they see a picture of an alien drawn on a cave wall, and they go, that's our creator. They look at each other and go, that's our creator. Now we have to go into the stars to find them. So then the next shot, they're on a fucking spaceship to go to this planet to go find their creators. Oh, yes, very deep thinking. Oh, yes, very fucking thoughtful. And then they go, and what do they find? They're buying a bunch of slimy motherfuckers rolling around in some black, shitty, fucking inky shit that comes up and invades your skin cells and makes you into a zombie. Like, even the rules of, like, or the logic of, like, what was happening to the people and they're mutating never made any sense and then like the only saving grace this movie has is i'm a big fucking numi rapace fan i think she's awesome she's the original girl with the dragon tattoo Rumi, yeah man yeah yeah she's numi i love her man idiot, and she man. was running around in some fifth element style like bandages and wraps and shit she looked kind of cute but like i don't know man like everybody in this movie was a dick and michael fassbender played a, like a little fucking whatever queenie fucking you know cyborg and whatever and the and just the actual aliens featured in this movie were a, like some white fucker who stands up is like oh da, 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 and he rips people apart who gives a shit like stan I'm about to say stanley kubrick really scott yeah. you have fallen <laughs> so far man you used to make these really slow pace slow burn science fiction epics like alien and blade runner but you're just doing some stinky bullshit now with do and, like, I hated the movie. I was sitting there in a big theater watching it in 3D. I paid all this money to see it. And the movie was so choppy and shitty. And, like, they would start, like a scene would start and just would chop and, like, cut away to another scene. And just, like, it felt like they made a three-hour movie and the studio said, like, make it fucking an hour and a half. And just, 
I don't know, man. Like, it just was so choppy and shitty. And, like, none of the effects were good. None of the aliens looked good. Like, basically what happened was a squid fucker fucked a white alien fucker at the end. And then another sloppy fucker popped out of the pussy at the end. Like, I don't know. Like, if that's your idea of, like, fucking chin-stroking, thought-provoking, fucking brilliant science fiction, then have at it, motherfuckers. Because I don't want nothing to do with the fucking alien universe anymore after fucking Son. Prometheus. Sounds horrible, man. They're horrible. <laughs> Fuck that. So, all right, what's next on your list, dude? We're, we're going Okay, now. number number four, and I don't know how you're going to come out on this because you kind of had a mixed reaction to it when I saw it and shit, but number four on the least favorite of the years, I, dude, I got the Dark Knight Rises on this motherfucker. Whoa. <laughs> I know, I know. Like, I know uh, everybody was at... Tw- everybody in the fucking world, M- Mumbai, India, fucking Indianapolis, <laughs> Indiana, fucking shutting off the fucking podcast. And yeah, sending, same fucking... S- sending hate emails right now. Like, how, how dare you, motherfucker? You uh, fucking go. Uh, fucking uh, okay, f- yeah, dude. Like, first of all, I'm sick of Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan can eat a dick. He's such a brilliant filmmaker. Whatever, man. Like, all he does... Is stack the deck, make it seem like the heroes is like so defeated, so beat down. And first of all, like, not to give too much away about later on my list, but like, all this motherfucker does is never have Batman be Batman. We have Batman Begins. Okay, worst title for any Batman movie, Batman Begins. Like, what is he? Like, he's beginning, like, whatever. He's not really Batman until the end of the movie. Then we have Dark Knight, so then he's Batman. And then at the end, he's like, I'm not Batman, I'm Dark Knight. I, I become the hatred of all of Gotham City. So then we cut to fucking finally part three, and he's not Batman anymore. He's some beat-up old man. We jump forward to eight years later and shit. We never got to see Christian Bale being an awesome, ass-kicking Batman. Like, he just was always a pussy, trying to rise to the challenge, barely being Batman and shit. And now all of a sudden, we jump forward to fucking him being a broken dick old man. And, like, whatever. It was fucking boring. And then they throw him in a Mongolian prison with a broken back. And then, oh, did we have Bane? Yes, Bane has come to Bottom <laughs> City to fucking fuck everything up. And then, but like, Bane, Bane, oh, this have... is Bane. I am in control now. I'm Thomas Hardy. Oh, I'm Tom fucking Hardy. I play the same role in every movie. A big buff fucker with a hokey voice. Oh, yes. Oh, fucking. Oh, when I give you permission to die, then you can die about it. Like, who? Like, like, I mean, I get, like, why people are hyped up from the trailers. He looked like this badass motherfucker who's going to take it to Batman. But here's the problem is everybody took it to Batman. Like, everybody. Like, fucking Batman could barely beat Ra's al Ghul in the first one. Fucking Joker fucked him up. And then he had to barely overcome the fucking six-hour Two-Face. Who fucking Harvey Dent was Two-Face for six and a half hours before he died. And then we have Bane. And, like, he kicks it. Like, this is the most worthless incarnation of Batman we've ever fucking seen. He can't fight. He can't move. All he can do is roll around in a fucking tank and shit. Oh, Fuck this the shit. Goat. I think you're wrong with you. Review Bane is their. No, I'm just kidding. You know what, man? Uh, no, seriously, no. Uh, honestly, this is on my list too. This is my worst, and uh, it, it it took me a while to get to this, and uh, I had to struggle with myself. And uh, I, I I knew you hated it, but I'm the one. I'm the one that, that talked me into hating it, and this is why. I'm a fucking Batman fucking fanatic. I love Batman. You love it, man. Yeah. Here, 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 here's why people love Batman. He's a detective, and he's a badass. This movie had none of the above. He didn't detect anything. He wasn't he, he wasn't super smart, and he wasn't a badass. He got his ass beat by fucking Tom Hardy in a fucking mask. It, it was it, it was it was so disappointing, man. I mean, it was just I fucking love the first two hours, maybe the first two and a half hours, and I was into it. I was like, oh, this is the greatest movie of all time. Fucking finally. And then the fucking end scene with Batman and Bane was the most oh, climatic they're, scene. They're, like, the whole movie is building up to this rematch of Batman coming back with his back broken, which, by yeah, the way... Man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking, like, Rocky Part 2. We want to see Rocky versus Apollo. This is Batman versus Bane. Well, then, I, I mean, the first time they fight, like, it, it's kind of a shitty, choppy fight, but Batman gets his back broken, and then he has to overcome all this shit, and his yeah. whole point is to come back and defeat Bane, and, like, they're fighting and fighting, and then what happens? It's like a fucking WWE wrestling match where somebody oh, runs yeah, into man. the ring and fucks it up. 
fucking fucking cunt woman shows up on her fucking uh, on Batman cycle and and blasts Bane and then has this has the most cheesiest line of all time. Like, oh well, you're rude about uh, fucking guns. It, it doesn't work. For so horrible. Happens. First of all, why is Catwoman riding around on the Bat cycle? Second of all, how corny is it that Batman doesn't even get to f- defeat his own villain? It's like, no, well, it, 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 like mean, like seriously, that movie was so slow paced, and then the last twenty minutes it was like, oh wait wait, we've been fucking around for so long, let's wrap it up. Yeah, man. I mean, like I was saying before, man, Batman's supposed to be fucking detective. Well, he didn't detect. Talia Al Ghul. He fucking, you know. He, he fucked the detect- shit out of her. He, he did. He, he didn't detect shit. He was a fucking idiot, man. He got his ass beat. He didn't, you know, the fucking bad guy pull one over on him. I mean, look, all right, look, look, look. The greatest Batman comic to me of all time is a graphic novel called Batman the Cult. Now, I'm not going to tell you, you know, everything about it, what it's about, but Batman basically is uh, fucking apprehended by this cult leader. And somehow he's actually brainwashed and to be, you know, he's, he's actually in the cult. But the, the best page is this fucking page where he's beating the ass of the cult leader. And the writer of this fucking comic knew Batman so well. There was like fucking nine or maybe 10 or maybe 16 little blocks of Batman kicking this fucking guy's ass. I mean, like, little pictures, you know what I mean? Like, like, it wasn't just one page of him, you know, giving him a death blow. It was, like, fucking little, tiny little fucking pictures. And Batman says to himself, God help me, I enjoy it. I, I think I'm paraphrasing here. But the point is, that's what people wanted to see, man. We wanted to see Batman beat Bane's ass, and we did not fucking see that. It, and it that said is, we got some Christopher Nolan cheese dick bullshit because he had to hurry up and run wrong uh, to the next terrible scene that and, he was going to film. Yeah, so 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 Batman fans and non-Batman fans, go check out the graphic novel The Cult. It is awesome. But movie fans, not movie fans, this movie was the biggest disappointment of all fucking time. I mean, it would be like Rocky too when he's going up against Apollo Creed and uh, all of a sudden they fucking just stop the fight and have fucking snow cones and the movie's over. I mean, it was it was so anticlimactic, man. Every, every, yeah, everybody blows each other and it just says the end. And who gave a fuck about the dysfunctional fucking family drama between Michael Caine and Christian Bale? Like, all these motherfuckers trying to hide their British accents and shit, trying to pretend right, to right, right, be right, so right. close and shit, and then like, and then he just walks out like, I can't watch you do it, fucking Master Wayne. I have to go to Paris and sit in a coffee shop and wait for you to show up. Fuck that bullshit. It's all poor writing, fucking weak bullshit. You know, it is, man. It is, man. And let me just tell you guys this, America. Goat and Phil are not anti-Batman. We're no, we anti- love Batman. We, we want to pay to see more Batman movies. Yeah, man. I mean, fucking our favorite movie, one of our favorite movies is fucking Batman Returns. Love we it. want to see Batman kick ass. We did not see that shit. We no. did not see that shit. It was a fucking abortion of Batman. I mean, so fuck- pussy. I mean, I fuck Chris Nolan, man. He should be fucking watching his back when he's crossing the street, man. That fuck was Chris Nolan. Awful, man. Well, I'm glad that we agree on that. What's next, dude? All right, moving along. Number three shows almost over. Number three, Premium Rush, starring Joseph Gordon, fucking Levitt, aka Robin, aka the new Batman, aka Go Fuck Yourself. This movie was terrible. I saw it at the cheap theater. I went in with no expectations. I just went in on, like on a Tuesday night to go see it, and Holy shit, was this a fucking piece of PG-13 shit. Joseph Gore-Levin playing a bicycling fucker who has some dangerous information in his backpack. And fucking Michael Shannon's chasing him all over the city, crashing shit. And the reason this sucked was they tried to make it like a crank movie where he just was on the bike the whole time, pedaling all around. And like jumping in and out of traffic, causing car crashes and shit. But it was so fake. It looked so CGI. It looked like fucking something you saw on PlayStation 2, man. Like, nobody did one physical stunt on this movie. Nobody even skinned their fucking knee up. It was some fucking CGI boring bullshit. Like, how many times you can watch Joseph Gordon-Levin with his little buzz cut run around New York City? Fuck it, man. I mean, maybe it was my fault for falling for it and going to pay $1.50 to see it. But fuck Premium Rush. The most boring, monotonous fucking movie of, like, the year, man. Yeah, man. That's not, that sounds fucking lame. I mean, I didn't want to see it. Uh, I'm glad that you had the fucking 
open mind and balls to see it. You know, you you gave it a chance. You were like, I, hey, man, I gave it a chance, man. Out. And I yeah. like it was one of the, the few movies of the year that I just wanted to walk out of and go sneak into another movie. But unfortunately, at that time, there was nothing else at the theater playing. So I was just kind of like, well, let's just get this piece of shit over with, man. And it was a piece of shit. And if you don't believe me, I'm sure it'll come out on DVD. So watch that shit. Tell me how it was good. Tell me how like it had all these interesting characters. It was just with some racing around on a 10-speed bike bullshit. Man, it sounds, it sounds like a fucking movie. Like, 10 years from now, no one's going to remember. No, Everyone's going to forget. Like, even, even if you were adventurous enough to see it in the theater... You're going to be like, I don't remember that fuck. I, I saw that shit. Yeah, there was, was a that? fucker on a bike. What else happened? Well, okay. there was a fucker on a bike, and then there was and another was fucker a, on a bike, and then the movie Exactly, ended. exactly. All right, moving along the list. Jumping up on my least favorite list, number two on the list. And it's kind of crazy that it came at a thing where it was your favorite, but it's my second least favorite, The Avengers, man. I was so... What? Yeah, sorry, man. Oh, I was I, I was so let down on this fucking movie, dude. And let me tell you why. I've been watching all these bullshit Marvel movies, man. They was building it up. The Avengers are coming. The Avengers are coming. I thought the Avengers were going to be the heaviest, most serious, badass, action-packed fucking movie. And then, like, it just turned into straight amateur hour when they made the Avengers, man. Like, oh, some generic alien fuckers, which we're not even going to show for the whole movie, are threatening us. They're, okay, okay, Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, they're going to kill everybody. And what do these fuckers do? They they squabble and they fucking bicker the whole movie. Well, I don't know if I want to work for Nick Fury. I mean, he's got some dangerous shit up his sleeve he's stockpiling weapons he's doing this i don't trust samuel jackson oh yeah loki's fucking running around blowing everybody but i don't want to jump into the fight listen so these fuckers they want to fight each other fucking iron man fights thor and then thor fights the hulk and then they jump on a helicarrier for an hour and a half and crash that shit and just like okay motherfuckers you're the heroes of of the earth and shit and these aliens are going to come and kill everybody and butt fuck everybody up the ass. And you really fucking just are like, I don't know if I want to save the earth. I'd rather fight. Well, like, okay, you don't want to take part in saving the earth. What the fuck are you going to t- Tony Stark with your corny ass Stark tire? What are you going to do? Just sit in there and drink martinis while the fucking you watch people get slaughtered in the streets and shit. It was the stupidest, long windedness boring this bullshit and i'm sorry but i'm sick of fucking robert downey jr and his dry junk fucking bullshit like one-liners and shit just rambling off at the mouth like fucking shia labeouf like quit making this motherfucker the whole focus of these movies let him play a supporting character iron man when he's iron man in the suit it's awesome but when it's just robert downey jr walking around in old vintage rock t-shirts that shit is corny as fuck and let me and listen you're like oh my god i hate this movie Watch that shit. Watch it at home by yourself. All that shit that you was uproariously laughing and shit in the theater when everybody was blowing each other next to each other in the summertime theater. You're going to see it now. That movie is not going to last the test of time. It is some corny shit. The action is not good. The only action part is cool is when Thor fights fucking the Hulk. And Chris Hemsworth showed up in a bad fucking wig in this movie. and he just, I don't know what character he was playing, but it didn't even line up with the Thor character from the Thor movie. But, like, the only part that was cool was the end part where there was that long tracking shot where it showed all the heroes as they were sh- fighting the Halo 4 villains and shit. But this was some generic, like, they built this thing up for five fucking years and they bring out some generic aliens. Which, okay, by the way, I don't know how you motherfuckers ran around all summer long watching Alien Invasion Epics. We had the Avengers, a week later we had Battleship, two weeks after that we had Men in Black 3, like... How many alien fucking invasion stories can you motherfuckers take, man? Just nonstop. Like, but whatever. You loved it. You couldn't get enough of it. I was fucking miserable sitting there watching that shit. Like, I just was waiting for the action scenes because there was no story. There was no emotion. There was no heart to it. Oh, the little fucking bald fucker, Agent Coulson, died. Who gives a shit about that nerdy motherfucker, man? Everybody's about to die. Every- okay. Everybody, like your friends, your mommy, your pappy, like everybody was going to die. And Iron Man didn't give a shit. He just wanted to argue with Captain America and shit. So whatever, like, not saying it's the worst movie of the year or whatever, but my least favorite, it let me down big time. Fuck you, Josh Whedon. Go back to blowing each other, other motherfuckers on the Buffy set, whatever. Like, you don't have what it takes to make fucking $300 million Hollywood movies and shit. The Avengers, man, big fucking disappointment. 
we we gonna have to agree to disagree on that one and uh, all right this this is gonna be interesting because i i haven't seen this movie but wow. I, 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 do, I don't think the goat or anyone else will disagree <laughs> my, my last least favorite movie of 2012 was total recall and i didn't see it and i won't see it but i'll tell you why how are you gonna fucking remake a fucking R-rated movie with Schwarzenegger with titties and cussing and shit and fucking PG thirteen it up with fucking uh, Irish McGee? I mean, how how are you gonna fucking do that? I'm sorry, man. I mean, if you're gonna remake a movie, remake the fucking movie. So that is my last list. I'm not. Gonna, yeah, I, I I didn't see it, man. Just for exact same reason. Like, I don't think it, you can strip everything out of Total Recall that makes it a good movie and still have like you know enough left over to make a whole nother movie out of like you know whatever like you sell outs out there you love your pg-13 you love to go for it lynn wiseman i mean i get it you go home and eat fucking kate beckinsale's pussy every night but like that's not a reason to make us the rest of us suffer through fucking bad remakes of fucking movies that we loved as children yeah, you know yeah I mean? exactly and, and like and like and like this isn't even the case of a movie that came out a long time ago that was rated R, but today it would be rated PG thirteen. It's not even the case of that. Right. This was an R. This was a hard R back then. It, w- it would be a hard, be a hard R. R now if it came out. Yeah, exactly. So it's not even a case of that. So I'm sorry, but <laughs> fuck you. I'll, I'll never see it. But I stand by saying it's my one of my least favorite movies of 2012. It's just it, it's it, it's a slap in the face, man. Come on, it's it's fucking insulting. Yeah, man. man. To quote Samuel Jackson, yeah, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn, <laughs> burn in hell. hell. Yeah, <laughs> awesome, man. All <laughs> right, so okay, we're gonna wrap this shit up. I got one more movie on my least favorite, my number one least favorite, and like this ain't coming from a place of trying to be ironic or trying to go against what all you people love out there. But I gotta tell you, man, I was in the theater. I was in the big screen theater with the best sound, and, like, I was miserable, man. I wanted to jump out a fucking window. I wanted to slip my throat. I fucking almost died when I saw Skyfall, the fucking latest. Oh, shit. Are you yeah, saying- Skyfall was some no. donkey James bullshit. Bond. Oh, not even James Bond. Some, okay, first of all, I got an issue with this fucking Daniel Craig Bond series. I did not like the fucking earlier movies, Casino Royale and Quantum Solos, when they came out. But I rewatched them recently on Blur Ray. I got into it. I went into Skyfall all pumped up. And the only question I got for you big fans out there, when is Daniel Craig going to become fucking James Bond? Because he's never James Bond. Casino Royale, he's just a thug. And you got Dame Judi Dench being like, oh, Bond, like, when will you learn the intricacies of being a double O agent and all this shit? And then, like, he's kind of James Bond. Like, he becomes cold and unfeeling at the end of Casino Royale. So like, all right, let's go. Quantum of Solace, he's out for revenge. Dame Judy Dench keeps going, when are you going to drop your quest for revenge and become a real W.O. agent? And at the end, they showed, like, the iconic thing of, like, the gun barrel coming down and Bond shooting the gun barrel and shit. So you're like, at the end of Quantum Solace, you're like, fuck yeah, man. He's finally, it took him two movies, but Daniel Craig, he's James Bond. Skyfall comes out. Starts out, he's James Bond for about five minutes. They shoot him, he falls down, he dies. He drops out of the Secret Service, and then he decides six months later he wants to come back. He's all beat up and old. And by the way, Daniel Craig, man, I don't know what they thought of casting him as the young James Bond, but this motherfucker looks old and, like, dying. Of, I don't know, man. He just looks unhealthy as a motherfucker. Well, well, hey, well, hey man, I mean, I'm not, I'm not fucking anti-Daniel Craig. I mean, you you remember that movie with him and... Uh, what fuck is his name? Well, he was in a fucking Russia, and yeah, it starts with a D. The, yeah, the not, defiance, not, defiance, defiance, but the Holocaust and shit. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. Don't get that's the Daniel Craig we love, right? You yeah, don't, don't. Shit. I'm not hating on Daniel Craig, dude. Like, yeah. I liked him. He had a supporting role in the movie The Jacket with Adrian Brody. He was good in. I liked him in the movie Layer Cake, where he played a British drug dealer. Man, like, I'm cool with Daniel Craig, but hey, as hey, Bond. Dude, dude. Cowboys versus aliens ain't a bad movie. It ain't right? that. It's kind of dumb, but it ain't that bad. At least <laughs> you'll see. Yeah, popcorn fucking film. It's awesome. Yeah, man. It's, it's uh, I, I am not against Daniel Craig. I will no. see Daniel Craig in more movies, but I will not see Daniel Craig in any other Bond movies because he can never become James Bond. In this movie, they're like, "Oh, you came back. Well, now you got to become Bond again because he got shot in the chest." So, he, so like, there's a boring 45 minute sequence of him running all these treadmills and them testing him physically and shit. 
And then finally, like an hour and a half in the movie, you finally run in to find out who the villain is. Is is Javier Bardem wearing a real bad, stiff, fucking blind what rug, acting all. I don't know, man. He starts grabbing Daniel Craig's crotch, telling him, like, maybe you'll like it if we sleep Brando. together. <laughs> yeah, and Daniel Craig's like, how do you know I don't sleep with guys, motherfuckers? I suck all this kind of dick. Come on now. And it just, I don't know, man. Like, this shit was just lame. And it, it, and the worst part about it was it's, it stank of some Christopher Nolan bullshit. It was the Christopher Nolan formula of fucking beating the hero down till he had nothing left and then being resurrected as the phoenix and all this it was the same old like i swear i thought christopher nolan directed this bullshit but it was somebody else well, well, well that's kind of fucking ironic and shit because doesn't he like fucking have a hard on for james bond like he wants to do james bond with no him. yeah even in inception like an obsession, an obsession with all the fantasy action scenes that they go to in the fucker's mind. Like they go skiing, they go like they do all these James Bond type action scenes. Like he really wants to do Bond in a big bad way, and then Bond wants to do Christopher Nolan in a big bad way. Like, and like especially after just a few months of seeing Dark Knight Rises, and this was the exact same movie. Like the guy coming back from like being broken, his spirit yeah, half in yeah, a rising. Yeah, yeah. It was. I'm sorry, but like. I, like, I know some people, like, they really like to go see the same movie over and over again because it gives them a feeling of, like, comfort food and bullshit, and, they, and they're and they not going to be yeah, too surprised. Yeah, right. It is, it, it is, like, the comfort food version of movies. And then didn't you also fucking tell me, man, that like, there's, like, fucking one scene where, like, fucking Daniel Craig's trench coat is flowing. You know, yeah. Man. Like, 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 fucking spawn. And, and like usually, usually Bond movies are about globe shot and shit. But he spends the whole movie in London this time to try to make it seem like Gotham. And like, yeah, there's a scene where he's standing on a rooftop, and you gotta imagine like this. There's been 20 other Bond movies, and like, why would he stand on a rooftop and look over a city? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. He got a long trench coat blowing know, in the wind. Dude. Like, oh god, man. Like, I know, man. Fucking Danny Elfman and Tom McFarlane have a lawsuit. In <laughs> I know, like, Jesus like, Christ. like they want some money from Skyfall, right. <laughs> and, and they should get it. Apparently, the fucking complete ripoff. And man. the movie was so long and bullshitty, and like. At the end, they pull some Home Alone bullshit where they go to James Bond's mansion where he grew up as a little kid. He throws like a bunch of numb, like thumbtacks into some light bulbs and shit. And him and Dame Judy Dench set off all these Home Alone booby traps. Like, I'm sorry, it's just the weakest <laughs> Bond movie ever. Just to wrap this up, we're not here to tell, you know, we're not pretentious. Like, we're not real film critics, man. Like, we just love movies. We like bullshitting about movies. We like sharing that with people. We do our YouTube videos. Now we're doing this podcast. If you agree with us, cool. If you disagree with us, cool. If you just like the way we fucking bullshit, cool. You don't have to agree with us. You don't have to think everything we say is great and like right, whatever. Right. And, and fucking send us your fucking comments. I hey, mean, it, really sway our opinion, make make us change our mind, or agree with us. We want to hear from you guys. Seriously. Exactly. We really do want to hear from you guys. Yeah. Like, 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 we want to make this podcast as interactive, like, as, just as much as the YouTube channel. Like, I wish pe- more people would comment on the YouTube channel, just because I just want to hear what you guys think. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah. like, we're not doing this because we want everybody know how we feel our opinions like we really don't give a shit about our opinions it's just a dialogue with you guys the listeners the viewers the whatever so so please man like let us know how you feel either at the youtube channel or at hillbilly dvd reviews at gmail.com let us know man and 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 give us some suggestions of what you you know because we're kind of still touchy feeling putting the feelers out on this podcast we're trying to get that we didn't mean to do a three-hour podcast but but fuck it (laughs) sorry but i'm fucking drunk and i love to talk about movies and that that's just the way it is exactly we'll try i love you guys yeah yeah but but we love it man it's been a great experience with us doing our youtube channel man we love all the feedback we love all the subscribers the comments the facebook page everything yeah thank you guys so much i mean there's so many of you like literally there's so many of you guys have all around the world too all all around the world in ireland with england and here in america everybody man bad boys around the fucking world so just to roll it out we just want to say Thank you guys, and we're going to keep trying to do this as long as we possibly can because we enjoy it, and we know a lot of you guys enjoy it too. And if you hate our guts or whatever, man, like you can leave us an email if you want, but it's probably just in your best interest to keep on moving on because we're just all we know how to do is be us. Yeah.
it is what it is. And, you know, fuck you, we're hillbillies. We love movies. And. So Bill D's not out. And this is the goat taking off. Thank you. Have a good night. Finish your fucking 12 pack, your case, whatever you got. Pass the fuck out. And when you wake up tomorrow, Hillbilly DVD reviews will be there for you. <laughs>